hoping to make its first big splash. Ryan Van Gorder's Eagles look to soar against Appalachian State next on Sports South. Coming off the school's first ever national championship, Appalachian State continues its stand on the Division I AA mountaintop. Again, ruling the Southern Conference and ranked number one in the nation. Today, the Mountaineers face bitter rival and completely revamp Georgia Southern in a key Southern Conference showdown. Right now, on Sports South. here at Georgia Southern where the Eagles hope to have something special cooking for their alumni and fans who get anything but a homecoming patsy. We are at beautiful Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia for a long-standing and meaningful rivalry which has great meaning again today as Appalachian State meets Georgia Southern. All the Eagles are ready and so are we. I'm Paul Crane. The defending national champions are ranked number one. Georgia Southern may be unranked, but should not be underestimated. Joining me once again is analyst and national recruiting expert Jamie Newberg. And Jamie, while Appalachian looks to keep its top spot, Georgia Southern still very much alive for a conference championship and a playoff spot, but all of that hinges on what happens today. And it should be a fantastic game. You know, Appalachian State starts off their season losing a tough one to NC State, but since has reeled off six straight wins, they regain that top spot last week as the number one team in one double-A. And then Georgia Southern, new coaches, new schemes, lots of changes here in Statesboro. They're fighting that consistency battle. Well, on the Appalachian side, the Mountaineers play a dominating defense, but they also play a spread option offense now run by a true freshman quarterback, Armani Edwards, who has taken over for the quarterback who started in last year's national championship game. And you're referring to Trey Elder, had some shoulder problems, came back too quickly, enter the true freshman, call Armonte Edwards an impact freshman. 1,000 yards passing, almost 400 rushing, 13 total touchdowns. Only played the position a year and a half in high school at Greenwood, South Carolina. Very exciting player. They love to get him on the edge. Well, the big story at Georgia Southern is new head coach Brian Van Gorder, who's taken over a program that has won six national championships. But the triple option and almost everything else, Jamie, that's created a rich history has become ancient history. Well, let's think about Brian Van Gorder. He's one of the greatest defensive minds in college football. He wants to build a championship defense. He was great at Georgia with Mark Richt as a defensive coordinator. Last year, he's with the Jaguars. He wants to build that championship defense here at Georgia Southern. Knows he can't do that, fighting the triple option in practice every day. So we've revamped and scrapped that offense. He found out, you know what? I need offensive linemen. I got to teach my receivers how to run the routes. They've lost 27 players since February, 13 new transfers in, the, in this program. So they're fighting that consistency battle, and they're coming. They're coming along. The work in progress has shown signs of working. Get ready for a great day of Southern Conference football. Top-ranked Appalachian, which has not won in Statesboro since 1996, facing a Georgia Southern team entering a new era. This is as good as it gets in 1AA, and it's next on Sports South. Southern Conference football on Sports South is being brought to you by Carolina Ford, where bold moves happen every day. By bb and there's opportunity here. By Food Lion, good neighbors, great prices. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia, where we've got a beautiful day for football. As Appalachian and Georgia Southern are just about ready to kick things off, Appalachian State won the toss and is elected to defer, and Georgia Southern has not won a toss all year. There's Appalachian's Jerry Moore in his 18th season at App, 25th as a head coach overall. He's the winningest coach in SoCon history, 
And when you consider names like Wallace Wade and Frank Howard, that's an impressive list. And Brian Van Gorder, his first year at Georgia Southern, spent a year in the NFL with the Jacksonville Jaguars, four years as a defensive coordinator at the University of Georgia. He has changed everything but the school colors here at Georgia Southern. I mentioned it's a beautiful day, low humidity, temperature in the mid-60s. The sun is out, and so are both teams. And we are ready to go here at Paulson Stadium. Julian Roush on to kick things off for Appalachian. Georgia Southern will begin on offense. And the kick is away. Georgia Southern in its own end zone brings things out. Marquise Maynard to the 21-yard line, and the Eagles will start from there. Southern's quarterback is Travis Clark, sophomore transfer from Southern Miss, who has taken the reins of this new offense. Most importantly, he has taken care of the football and just last week threw for 375 yards. And again, everything around him is new. The Eagles ran that triple option for years. But now the multiple offense inserted Brian Van Gorder and his offensive coordinator, Darren Hinchaw. Clark at the line of scrimmage under center. And a play action pass. Complete to Hal Scarborough, the tight end, a walk on who gets out to the 36-yard line. The Southern offense starting lineup is brought to you by Carolina Four. It's a completely redone offense, now multiple offense. Chris Covington was slated to start at tailback, but Florida State transfer Lamar Lewis is getting his first start. Those two will share time. Former quarterback Jason Foster is a wide receiver. It will take a few snaps when the Eagles get into the red zone. The line, better than ever. Russell Orr is a leader. Brad Williams and Lance Wayne are fathers and husbands. First down play. This is the reverse to Jason Foster, the former quarterback in the option. Picks up about five yards before he stopped and dropped there. The Appalachian defensive line, sponsored by Carolina Ford. It's the top total defense in the Southern Conference. Up front, Marcus Morrell can be a quarterback's greatest nightmare. Sophomore linebacker Pierre Banks is the team's leading tackler. And the secondary includes the SoCon's leader in interceptions with Jeremy Wiggins, who has five. Pickup of seven on the play brings about a second and three. And this is Lamar Lewis changing directions. A first down and much more. Lewis into Appalachian territory and shoved out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And the Eagle offense is in business. Yeah, they're, they're cooking here early on with three well-executed plays. And this is what made Lamar Lewis one of the top backs in Florida when he came out of high school, signed with Bobby Bowden, and Florida State transferred to Georgia Southern this past year. You see the cutback division and the speed to get around the corner. Lewis played two years at Florida State in 10 games a year ago, scored a touchdown. And in talking with offensive coordinator Darren Henshaw, he was saying, this is a guy that can make you miss. And he showed exactly that on that play. Travis Clark looking to the sideline for the play. Out of the shotgun, quick toss over to Lewis. Makes one man miss. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but nothing more as Appalachian with that aggressive pursuit defense stops him right there. Yeah, the Eagles have done a nice job on uh, this open and drive, mixing things up, keeping that Mountaineer defense a little bit off balance as we take a look at the replay. Paul, you said it. Makes people miss. Look what he did with Morrell right there. Makes three guys miss and makes something out of nothing, at least picking up a yard. Chris Covington on to replace Lewis. The deep back behind Clark. Rolls out of the pocket. Quick toss. Pass incomplete was intended for Irving Campbell. The crowd would like to have a flag, but will not get it. It will bring up third and long. Yeah, third and long is a situation that the Eagles do not want to be in because of this great pass rush by Appalachian State. You'll see Clark get hit right there at the end, but good coverage here by touchdown, the cornerback number six. Gary Farrington, the freshman defensive end, hitting Clark. The crowd wanted a flag. He leads the Southern Conference in tackles for loss, and Takes a lead today in hitting the quarterback after he lets go of the ball, but no flag on the play. Third and nine for Travis Clark. He's got two wide receivers to his left. Quick pressure. Fires over the middle. Intended for Michael McIntosh, but it's incomplete. And the Eagles will be forced to punt. 
Clark was under pressure once again because he had Michael McIntosh wide open over the middle and just threw the ball slightly behind. Well, Clark has done a nice job of taking care of the football. As I mentioned, this Appalachian defense doesn't take too many risks, but once they get things going, they really like to come after a quarterback, and once they see they may have a quarterback frightened, then they'll really bring it. Georgia Southern's Dan Jordan on to punt. Calling for the fair catch and making it just in front of the 15-yard line is Jeremy Wiggins. And Appalachian will start right there. The Mountaineers again with that spread offense. A 22-yard punt forces Appalachian inside its own 20. Appalachian quarterback is the freshman Armande Edwards, a true freshman who does it all, leads the Southern Conference in passing efficiency and leads all true freshmen in the nation in total offense. And he starts at his own 18-yard line is where the referees spot the football. Out across the 20-yard line. Pickup of about three or four on the play. The Appalachian offensive starting lineup brought to you by Carolina Ford. There are some outstanding skill players. Junior tailback Kevin Richardson, a Walter Payton Award candidate, and a former walk-on senior wideout William Mayfield, a former linebacker turned top receiver. The line, big and strong, led by last year's SoCon Lineman of the Year, Matt Eisenhower. Gain of four officially on the play. It'll be second and six. Edwards on the keeper, straight into the line. Not much of anything there as Georgia Southern's defense gives up a yard, little more. The Southern defensive lineup brought to you by Carolina Ford. Up front, Sherrod Taylor, 26 years old, one of the best stories in college football as he served on the USS Cole when it was attacked. We'll hear more about him later. Linebackers led by John Mooring, one of the best in the country. And the secondary, much improved. Quarterback Brandon Jackson has four interceptions and will be looking for more today. There's Sherrod Taylor on the left defensive end with Armani Edwards in his sights on third and five. Edwards, first pass of the day, turns into a run as he tucks and goes down right around the line of scrimmage. We'll see where the referees mark the ball. He'll be close, Jamie. Yeah, he's very close, and uh, they might have to bring out the change, and you could see the athletic ability of Armonte Edwards early in this football game. Not that big at six foot one, 165 pounds, but watch the acceleration right here as he gets up field and stretches out to try to pick up that first down. Nothing open. He made a quick decision to tuck and run where the referees have the ball spotted. I'm not sure he got enough. It'll depend on the nose of the football. It's got to get across the 28 yard line. He'll be very, very close, and it looks like he made it by the nose of the football. So Armani Edwards made a wise decision hitting the turf when he did, and he moves the chains for the Mountaineers. Yeah, heady decision. Uh, three straight runs there by the freshman. And, you know, this is a kid, as I mentioned earlier, Paul, only a year and a half at the quarterback position at Greenwood High School, but a senior year, 2,000 yards passing, 1,100 rushing, and he has really played well. First and 10 from the 28-yard line. Kevin Richardson, the Peyton Award candidate, standing next to Edwards. And the man in motion is T.J. Corman. But it's Richardson and nothing there. The Georgia Southern defensive front stopping that one. And Sherrod Taylor, one of those, in on the tackle. Yeah, let's take a look at the big fella, 6'2", 275, fighting off the block, doing a nice job there to make the tackle. Or helping on the tackle on, on Richardson, the running back for the Mountaineers. And Taylor had played in the middle of that defensive front, but Coach Van Gorder and company moved him from defensive tackle out to defensive end, and at 6'2", 275, he can wreak havoc from there. A loss of a couple of feet on the play. It'll be second and a long 10. Edwards wants to throw, has a man. William Mayfield, pickup of three, maybe four. As Mayfield tries to push the pile and gain positive positive yardage, it'll be third and about six for the Mountaineers. As we take a look at the replay, see a nice job of Edwards standing in the pocket. Short route by Mayfield. Ball bobble, but nice concentration to hang on. With a spot, a pickup of about four and a half. It'll be third and six. Edwards in the shotgun, rolls to his right. 
Bypasses some trouble. Now he has open field on the other side. Edwards first down yardage in across the 40 yard line. A flag down on the play. And we'll see what the officials have to say. And you can see why uh, head coach Jerry Moore of Appalachian State is excited about his quarterback. Armonte Edwards showing great athletic ability. Offside, number 23 on the defense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. We can hear Perry Havener letting us know the chains move again. And nice job here by Edwards to avoid the trouble with a pump fake. And yeah. then pick up the first down the other way. Pump fake and a little shake and bake. Then he shows the great speed. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. Edwards comes up, checks things off. Play action, and he tucks and runs again. Cross midfield, first down yardage and more as Armonte Edwards gets to about the 40-yard line of Georgia Southern. And in very Michael Vick-like fashion, Armonte Edwards is moving the Mountaineers. Yeah, a lot like Michael Vick. As you see the play fake, uh, they did a nice job of sealing off the left side of that defensive line. Armonte Edwards once again showing the speed to turn that corner, picking up a nice gain there on first down. 17-yard pickup by Edwards. First down for the Mountaineers again inside Georgia Southern Territory. Richardson moves from Armonte's right to his left. Split wide receivers on either side, and Richardson has the football to the 40-yard line, maybe 39, and then the Georgia Southern defensive line takes care of that. And you see this spread offense that Appalachian State runs. They installed it three years ago and have had great success, and now they're playing a guy first-year college football in Edwards, but he obviously has some help, a good offensive line, a great running game, and a complement of receivers, but the true freshman's played so well. Gain of one on the play. Appalachia now with second and nine at Georgia Southern's 39-yard line. On the reverse, Dexter Jackson can't turn the corner, shoved out of bounds. About the 39-yard line, he ran a long way to get very little. A nice discipline there that time by the Eagle defense, stringing that thing, that play out of bounds. If you take a look at the replay, good pursuit. Hold and contain, you see Maureen Earwood there on the tackle. Jason Earwood, their fine middle linebacker, number 52. Third and eight after the one-yard pickup. From inside the Georgia Southern 39, Edwards in trouble again, has to hurry it away, bounces it in the direction of T.J. Corman, but it's incomplete, and Appalachian will face fourth down. Yeah, nice job of the Eagle defense there, bowing up as we saw the Mountaineers with their running game, drive down the field, putting pressure on the young man. Now, puncher Neil Young injured a knee last week against Wofford. That brings Adam Kasuf, a freshman, into kick. He has two punts this year in previous games, averaging 37 yards a punt. But now he is the punter of record, heading toward the five, takes an Appalachian bounce and is downed outside of the five yard line. So Appalachian gets the job done in terms of field position and Georgia Southern will start with a long field to play on. We're in the first quarter, no score. first quarter and we've talked about all the changes here at Georgia Southern the triple option is gone the multiple offenses in and you can see some of the difference that things have made Jamie this Eagle team ran the football as well as anyone in the country but now they're doing more than just running the ball yeah they're throwing the ball and they're still averaging a very respectable 181 yards a game so that offensive line which is really obviously where it starts has done a great job this year adapting to this new system but it's a balanced attack that's the second in terms of total offense in the entire Southern Conference. So it's not like the offense is not working. Little pass to Lamar Lewis. Works his way out to about the 15-yard line. Gets a little breathing room for the Eagle offense as he picks up about four, perhaps five yards and, in the play. And I think the amazing thing with this Eagle offense is they're going from the triple option where they're predominantly running, now to a balanced offense where they're throwing a lot, yet they've only given up 
six sacks all season long. I find that remarkable, but they're matching up with the team that's leading the conference in sacks with uh, the Mountaineers. Actually, it, uh, they're number one in the conference in terms of uh, sacks allowed. Appalachian comes in with 19 flags flying everywhere. We'll see what the referees have to say. May have illegal substitution. Too many players. Georgia Southern. It's five yard penalty. Second down. And something we may not see today: a huddle. Both <laughs> teams don't. Both teams run no huddle. You know, App Appalachian State does it a little bit differently. They have different tempos that we're going to see them run the no huddle during the game. But it'll be interesting. I don't think we'll see one today. They signal their plays in from the sideline. A number of different people making signals. Only one is hot. Travis Clark was moved into fourth place on the single season completion list already today. Gives it to Lamar Lewis and the junior transfer from Florida State. Picks up a couple of more yards and gets uh, some of the penalty back. In terms of talking about the offense again, Jamie, they were so powerful in terms of the, of the run, but they were really so one-dimensional. The passing offense is second-ranked in the Southern Conference at over 200 yards a game. And as I mentioned, the total offense second-ranked in the Southern Conference. So this well-balanced attack, which is number 17 in the nation, is not exactly an offense that has taken any steps backwards. Well, they really made remarkable strides, and last week they really hit it big time throwing for 375 yards in their victory. Travis Clark up top overthrows his intended receiver Michael McIntosh and Georgia Southern will have to punt. And McIntosh, Reggie, uh, Michael McIntosh, he's another of those transfers. He was a Florida Gator, played two, was two years in the program, but ne never played for the Gators. Yeah, he was one of the top recruits coming out of the Sunshine State a few years ago. Actually committed to Clemson before signing with Ron Zook in Florida. Obviously now here at Statesboro and making a making a good impact on this Eagle team. Dan Jordan on the punt, standing in his own end zone. Brandon Jackson back to receive, but a very short punt and quickly down Appalachian will have tremendous field position. We're midway through the first quarter and the Mountaineers in pretty good shape when we come back. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. Appalachian State now with tremendous field position as they'll open at the Georgia Southern 40-yard line here in the first quarter of a scoreless game. Corman in motion. Snap fumbled. That did not work the way it was drawn up, but Armada Edwards quickly falls on it to keep possession. Yeah, Edwards making a freshman mistake there. Took his eye off the ball as it was being snapped. Take a look at the replay. Just right there at the last second, took his eye off it. Fortunate enough to fall back on it. A loss of three on the fumbled snap. Making second and 13. Amari Edwards now with Richardson and Devon Moore. As he again sends Corman in motion, this is Devon Moore. Off the left tackle to about the 40, perhaps 39. Give him a four-yard pickup. It'll bring about third and nine. Inside that Georgia Southern defense, Brian Van Gorder has revamped that as well. Talked about how he wants to build a championship defense here. Of course, everything starts up front. He's got a lot of size up there, T.J. Watkins and Brandon Daniel uh, in particular. Third and a long nine for Appalachian from Georgia Southern's 39-yard line. Edwards has the play, now shares it with his line. Quick snap toss over to Dexter Jackson, makes one man miss, then two, as first down yardage as he tiptoes the sideline and goes out of bounds around the 22-yard line as Dexter Jackson makes something out of what could have been nothing. Yeah, that was a phenomenal uh, individual play there by Dexter Jackson, the wide receiver, a junior. But it's gonna be brought back. A flag on the play is bringing it back. Holding, 82 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. That'll get a coach's blood pressure boiling. Watching a nice pickup and a first down brought back. 
as holding has negated the nice run and first down by Dexter Jackson. It will be third. And again, nine and a half, maybe 10 after the penalty. Yeah, watch 82, Josh Johnson. You'll see it right there holding. Actually, look like number two. And uh, De uh, negating a great individual effort by Dexter Jackson, showing great speed and quickness. Johnson, the freshman out of Newland, North Carolina. So now it's third and about eight after the penalty gets walked off. Edwards again out of the shotgun, turns quickly, then tucks and runs. Across the 35, close to first down yardage at the 30-yard line. We'll see where the spot, little activity, extra activity, and a flag does fly over on the far side. As Dwayne Grace and Hans Batishan got into it after the play, we'll see if it goes against one or the other or becomes offsetting. Again, the Mountaineers at least very close to a first down. Brian Van Gorder there looking on. Undoubtedly hoping this gain is negated. We'll see what Perry Havener has to say. After the play, personal foul, number 10 on the defense. Personal foul, number three on the offense. Those penalties will offset fourth down. So again, that was Dwayne Grace and Hans Batishan. There's Grace. Another transfer from the University of Florida. And more importantly, Edwards was just shy of first down yardage. So that brings up a fourth down and a very short one on the play. And Jerry Moore is elected to go for it here, deep in Georgia Southern Territory. Fourth and one from about the 31 yard line. Monty Edwards with Kevin Richardson to his left. From the shotgun, fakes the give, wants to throw. Edwards up top, has a man wide open, but overthrows Daniel Bettis, who had nothing but real estate in front of him, and the Mountaineers will turn it over on down. I tell you what, fourth and one, the Eagles are expecting run, and Armani Edwards in that Mountaineer offense trying a little play action, and hitting the tight end down the seam, and Armani Edwards just overthrows Daniel Bettis. Is he wide open by a good four yards there? So Appalachian going for a lot more than a first down, looking for six. Instead, turn it over on downs, and Georgia Southern, strong defensive stand there, Jamie, after having that drive begin deep in their own territory. They didn't give up much. Now Travis Clark and the Eagle offense. Jason Foster, the man in motion, off the play action. Keep it on the ground. Chris Covington with the carry. The team's leading rusher on the season is one that hits the holes between the tackles. Yeah, Chris is a good-looking running back. 5'11", 190 pounds, out of Brookwood High School in Snellville, Georgia. There you see his numbers on the year. Almost 600 yards rushing and seven scores. And the Eagles are going to have to mount a running attack tonight. Today, excuse me. This is Covington again, again going between the tackles as he puts the shoulder pads down, gets it across the 35-yard line to a, perhaps the 36, pickup of about two on the play. He's a guy that uh, wouldn't call him a short yardage guy, but he's certainly a number to watch when the Eagles are in a short yardage situation. Of his seven touchdown runs, six of them are from one yard. Yeah, he, he does have some power, but he's broken off some big ones this season, no doubt about that. He's a very talented all-around back. Couple of two yard gains for Covington. Gives the Eagles a third and long five, short six. Clark, quick toss to Foster. First down yardage at the 45 yard line. Jason Foster, the former quarterback, now turned wide receiver, holding on. That was a nice pitch and catch there. Clark to Foster, but it starts up front. A tremendous job by that Eagle offensive line especially on, on the tackle spots, matching up with those terrific defensive ends, giving Travis Clark all kinds of time to throw the football. Nine-yard pickup for Foster. And a nice job here as Clark gets rid of the ball in a hurry like he has to against this defense. Yeah, they, they're really quick off that edge. But I said those tackles are playing exceptionally well early on in this football game. Clark rolling out, tries to hit Irving Campbell, overthrows him, and again, hot pursuit makes a quarterback think of a lot of things. 
Yeah, and especially when you're, you're looking at a defensive end and Marcus Morrell, who's an All-American, had a ton of sacks last year. On the other side, you got a freshman named Therrington that's great off the edge leading the conference and tackles for a loss. So that's why they have to establish a run game so those guys can't pin their ears back and come right after Clark. Second and 10 after the incompletion. Georgia Southern at its own 45-yard line. The give to Lewis changes direction again, looking for room on the outside, not finding any of it there. So he's tossed out of bounds by Justin Wose. And a flag down. We'll see if Wose got uh, his hands on something he shouldn't have, and he did. He did. Justin Wose, the junior from Winston-Salem. Just trying to keep up and go for a ride there with Lamar Lewis. Face mask. Number 18 on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. You can see Wose coming in here and Lewis trying to fend him off, but grabbing anything he can. Actually, Lewis had a little face mask himself with that left hand, <laughs> trying the stiff arm. But on that particular play, Lewis didn't gain any yardage, but you saw the exceptional quickness. Morrell had him in, in his grasp behind the line of scrimmage, and he just did a little shake and bake and used that speed to get outside. Once again, the Eagles looking over to their sideline for the play. It's second and five from midfield. Clark has the play and now has the football. Looks both ways. Wisely gets rid of the ball as he gets delivered upon by Marcus Morrell. Yeah, Marcus Morrell, they're all American defensive end. 6'2", 245 pounder. He's had a fantastic year. And keep your eyes on what they try to do to Morrell. Whoops. Yeah, Lewis went low. Uh, he gets back up and does a nice job of getting after that quarterback. Morrell has led the Mountaineers in sacks each of the last two years. No Appalachian player has ever led the team in sacks three years in a row. But Morrell working on doing that as he's got six already this year and trying to add to it today. Third and five for Travis Clark. Again, the pocket collapses, gets it to Lewis, makes one man miss but needed to make two or three miss, has a gain of about three on the play, but he'll be shy of first down yardage. Yeah, trying to get a screen pass to their quick little back, Lamar Lewis, and number eight, Jeremy Wiggins does a nice job. Now, Appalachian State plays two nickelbacks, and here you see Anthony, or excuse me, Marcus Morrell put applying pressure on that screen play, but the Mountaineers play two nickelbacks, but they're really strong safeties, and Wiggins is a terrific player at that position, leads the conference with interceptions with five, but he did a nice job of fighting off the block and disrupting that play. Well, Georgia Southern will have to punt. It's Dan Jordan from his own 40, Dexter Jackson, the conference's leading punt returner. Can't catch up to it, takes an Appalachian bounce, heads toward the end zone. Or rather takes a Georgia Southern bounce and the Eagles not able to down it before the touchback. So Appalachian will be able to come out and start in its own 20 yard line. Yeah, Mountaineers very fortunate on that play. Jackson's got to come up and make that catch. Here's a replay from the end zone here. It's Eagles just quite can't get there to keep it inside that one yard line. Look, a big Georgia Southern bounce turned into a 47 yard punt, though the Eagles would have loved it to have been 46 or 45. <laughs> yeah, they would. However, the football does do funny things and it headed to the end zone, so Appalachian gets a little breathing room. Late in the first quarter, no score. Mountaineers had great field position to start their last possession, not able to do anything with it. Now from their own 20, this is Edwards, the option pitch over to Richardson. Richardson picks up five, six yards before being brought to the ground. And it'll be second and short for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Richardson's a great story. You know, you mentioned earlier, a walk-on from Elizabethtown, North Carolina, uh, has a, having a tremendous year. And look at his career rushing yards in, a, in an unbelievable group. 2,363. He's certainly going to add to that today and the rest of this season. Walter Payton Award finalist. He had 208 yards against Georgia Southern a year ago. Jerry Moore told us he was a walk-on two years ago, knew nothing about him. Well, everyone in the Southern Conference knows about Kevin Richardson now. Everyone in the country does as well, as you mentioned, a Peyton Award candidate. Edwards calls his own number across the Whoa. three. Low Whoa. Popped. Gets the first down yardage and a little calling card. That was a big-time hit from strong safety. Diedrich Bynum tattooing the freshman. 
as we take a look at the replay. Now, Edwards does a nice job on this play, faking the pitch. As you watch it develop, he turns the corner, fakes the pitch, and watch Bynum come up right there. Oh, oh. It just knocked the heck out of him. Bynum, the sophomore strong safety from Columbus, Georgia, knocks Edwards to the ground, but not before the freshman quarterback was able to pick up first down yardage. There's a tight shot of Damon Suggs, who was nodding his head in approval of that hit. And Edwards loses the football, recovered by Georgia Southern. That's Dwayne Grace picking up the loose ball, and the Eagles have the football. That Eagle defense making something happen, causing that turnover. Getting the lucky bounce, too, right in Dwayne Grace's hands. And another one of those transfers for Georgia Southern, the former Florida Gator, Dwayne Grace with the fumble recovery, and the Eagles are in business. Now, let's see if we can catch a number. Brandon Daniel, his former, another transfer yeah, from Florida, I was say, popping the football loose, and Dwayne Grace making the recovery. I was going to say his former teammate at Florida, Brandon Daniel, doing a nice job of just popping that ball out. And that's the way the first quarter comes to an end with a pendulum of momentum swinging to the home team side. Georgia Southern has stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top-ranked Mountaineers of Appalachian State. 15 minutes are in the book here in Statesboro, Georgia. And we are scoreless. Two of the titans in the Southern Conference living up to the billing here on Sports South. the campus of Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia. Paul Crane alongside Jamie Newberg, and we have seen a good one here today as Georgia Southern and Appalachian are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Here's the fumble that has turned things over. Travis Clark and the Georgia Eagle offense back on the field in good field position to start the second quarter, and Travis Clark has just overthrown a pass very quickly this fast no huddle offense working its way out quickly as he threw a ball in the direction of Darius Smiley and overthrew him you see number nine there is the Eagles working quickly trying to strike as they open inside Appalachian territory at the 42 yard line you can see the first quarter stats Jamie the most important numbers at the top no score yeah zero zero a fine first uh, quarter there now the one turnover just committed uh, by Armonte Edwards, giving Georgia Southern great field position. Clark gives the ball to Lewis, looking for running room, finds some on the right side. Inside the 35, a good gain before Appalachian piles on. No whistle, and they throw him to the turf. And Lewis has to wonder what's going on here. I tell you what, that was a nice job by that offensive line, creating a big push up front. And with Lamar Lewis being five foot nine, those linebackers can't can't find him. See how he's behind those linemen getting that drive out there? They can't find him. You see Morrell coming from the backside. Then a host of Mountaineers driving Lewis back. Morrell wrapping him up and refusing to let him go. And you mentioned he's five nine, Lamar Lewis, but he's 200 pounds. That's pretty solid. An eight yard pickup on the play creates a third and two situation. The Eagles inside the 35 yard line of Appalachian. Clark. With time, fires in and out of the hands of Jason Foster. Clark threw it behind Foster, who was not able to hold on. Yeah, the right call just not executed as Clark throws the ball just a tad behind wide receiver there, Jason Foster. See a quick drop, slant pattern, just a poorly thrown ball. And Corey Lynch on the coverage there, the South Southern Conference Player of the Week, defensive player a week ago, and he made 13 tackles against Wofford and blocked a key field goal try in Appalachian's win. So fourth and two from the 34-yard line, and Georgia Southern decided to go for it. Clark, rolling pocket, looking to his left, and overthrowing his intended receiver, so it's a missed opportunity. It's Chris Covington out of the backfield. It's both teams now going forward on fourth down in your opponent's territory. Fourth and short, both teams opting to go to the air rather than staying on the ground, and that time Clark uh, overthrew his wide receiver. 
take another look. Actually, it was Raja Andrews, the intended receiver, as Clark in a hurry. And again, this Appalachian defense may not have put a finger on him, but it certainly affected his decision on when to throw the ball. Well, then not only that, because they put the pressure, he didn't have time to set his feet properly, and that's why uh, that's why he had a trouble giving, delivering the ball to the right spot and overthrow. Receivers have been open, but Clark hasn't been able to hit them. And again, I think the Appalachian, knowing the Appalachian defense is on its way, has a lot to do with that. Kevin Richardson looking for running room on the left side, not finding much of it there as Georgia Southern's defensive front has been up to the task thus far. Only a two-yard pickup on the play. John Mooring, the Buchanan Award candidate, in on the tackle there. Yeah, they got a couple fine linebackers in Mooring, Earwood, Benfield. And he has had a great career here in Statesboro for Georgia Southern. First team all-conference last year. 255 total tackles, five interceptions, 31 and a half tackles for a loss. He's got eight and a half of those tackles for loss this year. Edwards in a big hurry. The pass is picked off. Terry on Benefield, one of those linebackers you were talking about, Jamie, wrapped it up and didn't let it go. And Benefield with his first interception of the year for the redshirt freshman. And once again, Georgia Southern will have outstanding field position. And I believe that was Brandon Nichols coming in on the blitz, applying great pressure. You'll see on the left-hand side, right here, right-hand side, coming in, applying the pressure in Edwards. And Benefield doing a nice job of taking a laser beam out of the air. That didn't go through his hands. He didn't let go. No, not at all. Great play there on the rush and on the interception, giving the Eagles great field position once again. The Eagles in business at the Appalachian 40-yard line. First and 10 from there. Clark on the option pitch. Good pickup there by Covington. Check that, rather. It's Marquise Maynard. And Maynard, another small back, 5'8", 170 pounds, only seven rushes on the year. But you can see he's got the quicks to get outside. And a pickup of eight on the play. Look at That's the a quick room. way to get outside. <laughs> Clark now wants to throw as a man, completes the pass to Irving Campbell, who has first down yardage inside the 30. And you can see this Georgia Southern office, they do so many different things. It keeps the defense off balance, and they've done a nice job of blending everything today. Take another look here as Clark in a hurry rolls away from defensive pressure and gets enough to move the chain. And we've seen him roll left and right a lot early on in this football game. Again, the option this time to Lewis. Takes the pitch, but not much there as Appalachian closes the holes. Pick up of one, maybe two, depending on the spot. Yeah, trying to get Lewis around the corner on that short side of the field. But I tell you, Morrell, number 44, they're terrific. Defensive end does a nice job. Pushed him back and out quickly, so gain of a short one on the play. Not much yardage at all. Marcus Morrell, who has put together some tremendous defensive numbers while fighting off double and triple teams much of the time. This is Lewis, was over the 20 yard line to about the 19, gain of around four on the play. And Morrell, we mentioned, fighting off those double and triple teams. Russell Orr, the junior right tackle, is the man who's uh, been given the assignment of staying on Morrell today. Thanks a lot. Uh, so far, they've done a pretty good job. You see uh, Marcus Morrell, one of the Buck Buchanan Award candidates. One of two in this game. John Mooring on the Georgia Southern side, but it's now third and six the buck buchanan award the top defensive player in one double a into the end zone Clark. touchdown raja andrews what a fantastic catch by andrews in the back of the end zone to put georgia southern up a leaping grab by raja andrews for his first touchdown of the year the 19-yard touchdown grab gives georgia southern it's first lead. Patrick Bolin will come on to try to add to that. Five of six on his point after tries this season. And gets another one here. 
The Eagles strike first and grab a 7-0 lead as sophomore Travis Clark in this new multiple offense of the Georgia Southern Eagles strikes first, finding Raja Andrews with his first touchdown catch of the year. Georgia Southern has the lead. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia, where Georgia Southern has grabbed the lead 7-0 on a 19-yard touch touchdown pass from Travis Clark to Raja Andrews. For Clark, it's his fifth consecutive game with a touchdown pass that ties a Georgia Southern record set two years ago by Chaz Williams. And the crowd, the homecoming crowd, very much in this game. The ball is kicked in the direction of James Hill, who wisely lets it go out of bounds, and a flag will give Appalachian better field position. Also on that pass, Travis Clark has moved into third place on the Georgia Southern all-time list for single-season completions. Kick was out of bounds. He placed it at 35-yard line by rule. First down. And here's another look. Clark with his 98th completion of the season, moving him to third place, as I mentioned, on the single-season all-time list here. And Raja Andrews going up get it and getting it. And you know, Jamie, the Georgia Southern receivers, as we mentioned, have been pretty wide open today. Clark finally hits one. Yeah, they have. And I tell you what, he did a nice job of keeping that, keeping that foot in bounds. And I see the safety a little bit late getting over there. Five plays, 40 yards. Uh, two minutes and 25 seconds. Remember, it started with an interception that defense created. Armonte Edwards rolls to his left, looking for a hole, finding a small one that gets him across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Couple of yards for Edwards as the Mountaineers now try to answer on a field they haven't won on in 10 years. That's right, and a lot of it is obviously with this young man at quarterback, a freshman, very active today in the running game is Armani Edwards. A three-yard pickup for the freshman quarterback, making it second and seven. Richardson sent in motion to the left side. Edwards wants to throw, looks to his right. As a man there, and William Mayfield, his favorite target, pushing toward first down yardage. Flags fly once again. A little extracurricular activity after Mayfield had been wrapped up. Uh, they think they flagged Mario Acatelli, their freshman left tackle, that they're very impressed with. He's played very well this year for Jerry Moore and the Mountaineers. One of eight true freshmen playing on this year's team, last year's national championship team, only had four true freshmen see the field. Eight have already seen the field this year. Several start, including Mario Acatelli at left tackle. Yeah, pretty amazing when you look at the offense. A left tackle, your starting quarterback, true freshman, the number one team in one double A. The result of the play was a first down. After the play, personal foul, number 61 on the offense. That penalty is administered. It'll be first down and 10. That's Acatelli. Freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. You just see Mayfield here do a good job of getting by Dwayne Grace. Then you'll see a little extracurricular hit there after the play. Well, Brandon Jackson, the corner who stood Mayfield up and stopped the play. And as we mentioned, Acatelli just trying perhaps a little too hard, called it a freshman mistake. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. Edwards up top. Crowd wanting some kind of a flag as Dexter Jackson was the intended receiver, or the crowd, uh, I should say, upset over the flag that was thrown as the players were battling all the way down the field. Brandon Jackson and Dexter Jackson. Same names and numbers. Pass interference. Number two on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So the same names and numbers, but no relation other than being very close on this play. Yeah, here we got Jackson on Jackson. See if he, if it is a pass interference call. That's very 
questionable <laughs> right there by the referee throwing a pass interference. I don't even know if that's catchable. Especially with Brandon Jackson, the cornerback, looking back for the football, but perhaps the referee was looking more at his arm being extended, trying to create some space and making a call on that. But you would think with the benefit of a replay, it looked like incidental contact on the coverage. However, the penalty moves the ball out to about the 46-yard line. Appalachian approaching midfield with another first and 10. Armani Edwards on the keeper to the right side. Cuts it back in over midfield to about the 46, perhaps 45-yard line. Nice pickup by the freshman quarterback. And a nice job of blocking up front by the right side of that Mountaineer offensive line. That's where Matt Eisenhower, the Southern Conference top offensive lineman from a year ago, resides. Jeremy Robertson, the right guard. As you see, they got the flow going one way and Edwards going the other. They steal off that right side. Edwards averaging over five and a half yards per carry on the ground this year. Picks up nine on the play. Sends Mayfield in motion on second and short. Edwards rolls to his left this time. Stops and wants to throw. Back across the field. Has a man in Josh Johnson who can't get a hand on it. Under throws another flag. Hits the field. Johnson had to come back for the football. And see Dwayne Grace on the coverage. We'll see what the call is. And again, it's going to go against Georgia Southern. Pass interference. <laughs> Number 10 on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's another close call as well. With the ball being a bit underthrown and Johnson having to come back, contact with Dwayne Grace. We mentioned the sophomore transfer from the University of Florida here to Georgia Southern. Jamie, look at Grace here. Yeah, Dwayne Grace had that left uh, left hand on him. Don't know if you can really tell how much of a push it really was. Perhaps he ran into Johnson, who had the arm extended. But Johnson really wasn't going for the football at that point. He was trying to keep Grace away from him, who ran into the extended arm. Nonetheless, it's first and 10 for Appalachian at the 31. And it's Richardson plowing his way inside the 30-yard line. Yeah, it's the first time in this game we've seen Richardson run with power as uh, he earned those four or five yards driving those legs coming in as one of the top backs in the country gains four on the play it'll be second and six and Appalachian working from the no huddle it's not a hurry up it is a no huddle though Mayfield the man in motion crosses in front of Edwards the freshman quarterback on a play action keeps it running room to the 20 first down yardage for Amadi Edwards Now you can see the explosiveness in that young man. Great acceleration. Diedrich Bynum perhaps saved a touchdown there with a nice tackle in the open field from the cat quick, cat quick freshman from South Carolina right there. He gets by Bynum. It's a touchdown. Again in the no huddle, Jerry Moore said he has three speeds, normal speed, Indy speed, which is fast, and jet speed, which is faster. We would think this is normal. Again, that's not a hurry-up situation inside the 21st and 10. Edwards again works his way inside the 15, down to about the 12, perhaps 11-yard line. Another good pickup for Edwards. And one thing Edwards is showing, too, is patience. You know, he lets things unfold. He sees a crack. He has the vision. Then all of a sudden, his athletic ability takes over because he's so quick and explosive. You see the move there, the great feet, the bounce. He's quite a good looking athlete. Six foot, just 165, but has speed and he can throw the ball as well. We've seen that today. Little flea flicker toss to TJ Corman, the wide receiver. Can't find anything as John Mooring among those shutting it down. Mooring with the one arm tackle, <laughs> showing some power and strength there. A nice try by Appalachian to do something special, but Mooring would, did not lose his ground. Well, that was a nice job by the Eagle defense playing disciplined football, not biting on the flow going the other way. We're in Statesboro, Georgia, as Appalachian is visiting Georgia Southern. Paul Crane alongside Jamie Newberg with our Sports South crew. 
Georgia Southern with a 7-0 lead here in the second quarter. Third and four. Armonte Edwards looking for first down yardage, but not able to find it as Dedrick Bynum throws him to the turf. Yeah, Bynum with three big tackles already in this first half. He just saved the touchdown a couple plays ago, and then he tackles the true freshman and stops him on third down. As you see Edwards, just a little quarterback draw, a little dance to get outside, and there's Bynum to eat him up. That'll bring a 30-yard field goal try by Julian Roush, who's four of five on field goals tries thus far this season, and he makes good from 30 yards. His percentage of field goals is number one in the Southern Conference, and he makes good on his first try today. And he pulls Appalachian within 7-3. Just over five minutes to play here in the second quarter. Georgia Southern's lead has been cut to seven to three. These are two of the titans of the Southern Conference. Over the last five years, both of these teams are 25 and eight in Southern Conference play. That's the best. And this series could not be any more even. It dates back to the 1930s, and it's all even at 10, 10, and one. But remember, there was no football at Georgia Southern from 1939 to 87. In terms of this series, there was no football between the two. But Georgia Southern went 41 years without playing football before Irk Russell brought it back in 1982. Georgia Southern on the tip. Marquise Maynard uh, muffed the kick, brings it back to about the 15-yard line. But again, these are the top two teams in this conference. And uh, barring a tie today, which is impossible these days in, in college football, uh, someone's going to get the top record in conference play to themselves for the moment. And of course, uh, Furman will have a say so in all that as well. <laughs> First and 10 from the 15-yard line. Travis Clark off the play action, waiting for someone to get open, finds no one, and wisely throws it away. Four minutes and 35 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Georgia Southern leading the nation's number one, one AA team, Appalachian State, seven to three. Yeah, behind a touchdown pass from Travis Clark to Raja Andrews. Saw his numbers in the first half thus far, and he's Played well, hasn't made the mistake, made a couple big throws in guiding this offense. After the incompletion, it's second and 10. And this is Lamar Lewis fighting for something off left tackle, but not much of anything there at all. As Monty Smith, one of many Appalachian defenders to have his hands on Lewis. And trying to run behind big number 75, Brad Williams, a transfer from Central Florida, who's made a big impact on this team, a six foot five, 295 pound left tackle. We approach the four minute mark here in the second quarter, now third and nine. Two wide receivers on both sides of Travis Clark from the shotgun. Under pressure again, caught and dropped by Reggie McCutcheon. The pass was low, and McCutcheon not able to hold on. Yeah, trying to get McCutcheon involved in the offense and have been able to get him the football. Last week, he exploded for a school record, 191 receiving yards. That's the first time he's been thrown to tonight, trying to get that quick little screen going to him. So the Georgia, off Georgia Southern offense stalls. Dan Jordan. Out to punt waiting is Dexter Jackson, the Southern Conference top punt returner. Gets his first opportunity here from his own 40-yard line. Shakes off one would-be tackler, make it two. Crossing midfield and heading out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Averaging over 19 yards of punt return. Gets a little less than that there, but Appalachian will have good field position when we come back. I throw just over three and a half minutes to play. Here in the second quarter, Georgia Southern leading 7-3 on homecoming. The Eagles playing the nation's number one team on homecoming. 
Freshman quarterback Armani Edwards of Appalachian has done a nice job in the air and on the ground. 14 carries for 85 yards. Another carry here, but not much yardage as he has to work to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that time the uh, entire Eagle defensive line collapsing and surrounding the talented true freshman. And here's a look at what Appalachian was able to do a year ago. The 12 wins tied a school record, but more importantly for the Mountaineers, they won the first national championship in school history. Jerry Moore, the national coach of the year, and then you see Richie Williams, the former quarterback, a first-team All-American. Again, Edwards, not much to see. And the ball appears to have popped loose. The Eagles saying they've got it. The referees looking in the pile, not agreeing with them yet, and asking the Eagle sideline to take it easy. It appears Appalachian has retained possession, but Edwards finding it tough going on this series. As we take a look at the replay, nice little play action. Actually, that's Richardson. He tried to give the ball to Richardson. Richardson, the running on. back, yeah. Lost in the pile, Richardson and the football. Nonetheless, the Mountaineers back at the original line of scrimmage. It's now third and 10 from the Georgia Southern 47. Edwards wants to run again across the 40. It appears he has first down yardage very close. About a 10 yard pickup for Armonte Edwards who's done a nice job on the ground in particular. He did and I tell you what right guard Jeremy Robertson did a nice job of getting a hat. And that all everything linebacker John Mooring and then the Eagle defense to really open the running lane up for Edwards to get that, get that first down. You see big Jeremy Robertson there. 295 pounds, first and 10 for the Mountaineers at the 37-yard line. Edwards given time, but not able to find his receiver in no small part because Ronnie Wiggins got a hand on things. Yeah, he couldn't get everything on that football. He got hit as he was throwing it. Eagles doing a nice job of getting some pressure on the young quarterback. There you see Sherrod Taylor coming off the edge, applying the pressure just as Edwards is getting rid of that football. And remember, he's a lefty. That's his backside. Now it's second and 10 on the 37-yard line. Edwards quick toss to Mayfield, but nothing doing there. Georgia Southern again all over the play. Jason Earwood from his middle linebacker spot teaming up with Terrion Benefield to shut that down. Yeah, nice job there, tag team, so to speak, with Earwood and Benny Field as you take a look at the replay trying to get the football out there and nowhere to go. Loss of three on the play. Edwards just five of 10 passing for 17 yards. That's all Georgia Southern's defense is allowed through the air to this spread option attack of Appalachian. Edwards wanted to throw, pocket collapses. He goes back and again, almost picked off by Dedrick Bynum. It's incomplete. Georgia Southern's defense, which we've talked about a coach Van Gorder is trying to build into a championship defense. It's third in the conference in total defense and growing today. Yeah, they're playing very well. And a lot of what of Armani, uh, Armani Edwards has done on the ground has been on his own because of his great athletic ability. Now on this play, it's a dangerous throw because he's throwing across the field on that deep out. That's a tremendous job once again by their strong safety, Diedrich Bynum, who's had several nice tackles in that big breakup today. Jason Foster awaiting the punt of Adam Kasouf. Foster makes the fair catch at the 15-yard line, and Georgia Southern will start for there with less than a minute to play here in the second quarter, clinging to a 7-3 lead, a 25-yard punt by Kasouf, effective in terms of field position as it pushes the Eagles back to their 15-yard line. And with under a minute to play, if you're Georgia Southern now, just don't do anything to put the ball on the ground or get a turnover here. Go into the locker room at halftime up by four. You gotta be pretty happy. Well, they've played a, a couple of teams tough, as again, we've talked about so many changes here. They played North Dakota State tough through the first half, had a first half lead before it got away in the second half a bit. That's one of the top teams in 1AA. Yeah, and they lose to Chattanooga on a last second field goal as time expired. So 
You know, they're pretty close to being four and two or five and one. And I'd say they're thrilled with having a 7-3 lead at halftime as Travis Clark takes a knee and the Eagles will head to the locker room with the lead and a very impressive first half. Offensively, Travis Clark and company have moved the chains and gotten the job done. Done a nice job taking care of the football and defensively they forced the biggest turnover of the game and certainly has stood tall against what was a very, very impressive Appalachian offense coming in. Yeah, I mean, in Appalachian State's been able to move the ball, but at the times when they need it, that Eagle defense is really bowing up and stopping them. Well, as we head to halftime, let's send it down to Georgia Southern head coach Brian Van Gorder. Coach, uh, how do you feel about having a 7-3 lead at halftime? Well, you know, obviously we're ahead, so that's that's good, but there's a lot of areas to clean up offensively. Never got into any rhythm. Disappointed in our offense. Good uh, throw and catch, though, for a touchdown. What's the biggest focus in the locker room at halftime? Well, we got to focus in on consistency, staying consistent, uh, keep playing great defense, but offensively, we've got to find some answers, and uh, right now we don't have them. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. Right. We wish you the best of luck. We have hit halftime, and Ryan Van Gorder may not be happy with his offense, but he's got to be happy with the lead. He's got the only touchdown of the game thus far. 7-3 as we head to halftime. Georgia Southern leading the top-ranked Mountaineers of Appalachian State on a beautiful homecoming day in Statesboro. We'll be back with halftime coverage in a moment. We'll talk about Georgia Southern University. They say... Georgia Southern is such a great place to learn. Georgia Southern is just the right size. It has a challenging academic environment. The campus is so beautiful. Like a beautiful painting. My professors give me one-on-one -on -one attention. A lot of personal attention from my professors. There are so many opportunities to get involved. It's our championship tradition. It's my school. It's my home. It's my university. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. We're just about ready to go here with the second half as Georgia Southern leads here on homecoming, 7-3. to three. And uh, Jamie, Appalachian held out of the end zone for the first half. We mentioned the nice job that their freshman quarterback has done with his legs, Armonte Edwards, gaining 96 yards. But they need more than that if they're going to win this game. Yeah, he's really been their entire offense, and they got to get running back Kevin Richardson involved. You know, he's one of the top running backs in 1AA football. Only six rushes for 11 yards in that first half. So it can't just be all Armonte Edwards. they got to get their great running back involved. We mentioned Kevin Richardson, a Walter Payton Award candidate, and that's the essentially the 1AA Heisman Trophy to the best overall player given each year in 1AA football. And as Jamie mentioned, Richardson with only six carries in the first half for the 11 yards, that's a 1.8 average for a guy that's averaging five yards per carry on the season and has already seen the end zone 11 times on the ground and in the air. Yeah, you're talking about a guy that's very productive and very active uh, participant in this Mountaineer offense, but obviously a lot of credit has to go to Georgia Southern and what they're doing defensively, taking him out of the game. That man right there responsible for so much of it, Brian Van Gorder, who has changed everything on both sides of the football. And in a, in, a, in a truly amazing way to transform this football team, abandoning their vaunted triple option for a multiple offense. And most importantly to him, really fixing up that defense. James Hill from his own goal line gets pounded at the 17 yard line and down he goes. Wes Turner, the first one to hit him. Wes Turner bringing it with the second half pickoff. As we take a look at the replay, you're going to see 42 come crashing into your screen and into Jackson with a big time tackle. Hill meets a mountain. And the Mountaineers will start at their own 18 yard line. On the return by Hill. Armonte Edwards, we mentioned 96 yards rushing in the first half. We'll see what kind of adjustments the Mountaineers are able to make. It looked like they were surprised on that snap. The ball go to the, went into the hands of Edwards. No one was moving, and he threw it away. That's what you call a wasted play. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Coming out of halftime, you want to get things going, you know, with something productive, and they just completely messed up that play. Four for nine for 22 yards. Had the big pick that caused 
that touchdown. Yeah, everybody's just kind of standing still. Hello, anybody come out of the locker room wanting to do something? But you know, Edwards did a nice job of just getting the ball out of bounds there. Second and 10, Richardson with the football across the 25 to about the 28, maybe nine yard line. Best run of the day for Kevin Richardson. Yeah, absolutely, by far. He almost matched his first half total on that run. As we take a look at the replay run and behind Eisenhower doing a nice job. You see the tight end there blocking down and Richardson finishing it strong for the first down. 12 yards on the pickup for Kevin Richardson, so it bests his total for the first half. And Richardson with the ball again, but this time absolutely nothing on the left side. Terry on Benefield, the redshirt freshman linebacker, holds that to a yeah, Bennyfield, their, four yard loss. Their Will linebacker does a nice job of coming off the edge to stop Richardson for a loss on first down. So, what Richardson was able to gain on one carry, he gives back partially on this one. Second and 14. Edwards looking to throw as a man in Mayfield. Check that. Make it Dexter Jackson. Jackson gets a lot of that yardage back and then some. It'll bring about third and about five. At that time, uh, Georgia Southern just in a zone defense, and Jackson finding a soft spot, and Edwards doing a nice job of finding him to pick up seven, eight yards. Third and five from the 35-yard line. Edwards in the shotgun. Over the middle, quick toss to Richardson. First down yardage and much more across the 40. Well inside Georgia Southern territory as Richardson finds a seam and takes advantage of it. Yeah, Richardson kind of running a skinny post, beats the linebacker, and Edwards delivers a nice ball on the run, on the move to their All-American running back. See plenty of time up front. The offensive line doing a nice job. They get uh, Richardson the football in that, at that second level, and he does all the damage. Long throw, caught on the far side. Guess who? Kevin Richardson. Richardson getting involved, just like Jamie had mentioned Appalachian needed to do, and they're getting him involved on the ground and in the air. Yeah, and coming into the game, only about 14 receptions. So they're finding a way to get him the ball, like you said, in the passing game, Paul. 25-yard pickup, and it looks like Jerry Moore has sped things up. It's not the normal no we're, huddle. We're an Indy. We're an Indy. Or call it an Indy. Edwards again calls his own number up the middle to the five standing on his feet at the two before he's knocked down before reaching the goal line. I tell you what that Eagle strong safety by him right there number 17 with his second big hit on the freshman quarterback Edwards. He had a big time hit in that first half and another one there but Edwards doing a nice job calls his own number quarterback draw you see the opening on the right side of that offensive line but watch Bynum finish right there Appalachian has sped things up second and ten dropping the football and falling on it Appalachian keeping control but just when things were looking as good as they've been all day for the Mountaineers another mistake and that's got to kill you you're in game eight of your football season silly mistakes like that that's the second time we've seen the, the handoff exchange between Richardson and Edwards botched and they've been fortunate twice now Paul to recover those fumbles that backs them up to the six yard line the Mountaineers can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. They need to get down to about the one. Edwards is over 100 yards rushing now on the day at 102. As he sends Corman in motion, Edwards rolling to his right, tucking and running and not reaching the goal line, putting his helmet down, but having it answered as Ronnie Wiggins put up a wall. Yeah, he wasn't going to run through Ronnie Wiggins at number 52, Jason Earwood. Airwood checks in at 233. Edwards is a buck 65. <laughs> <laughs> Take another look as Edwards tries to get his way to the end zone, but he can't find it. Jason Airwood, the middle linebacker, sealing the deal along with Ronnie Wiggins. It's fourth and a yard, maybe a little more, at the two yard line. Appalachian going for it. Giving it to Richardson, looking inside. Appalachian signaling for a touchdown, but the referees are not. 
Richardson denied the end zone, but we'll wait on the spot to see if he's able to get the first down. Referees want timeout. Tough going in there. It is a first down. It appears he's got the first down yardage inside the one. Yeah, they're going to bring out the change just to make sure you see the great effort there by Richardson. It's going to be awfully close. We'll see how close. Initially, it looked like the spot was far enough inside the one yard line to give the Mountaineers a first and goal. And you saw it. We'll be able to tell from the reaction. No, it's not. Wow, what a big stop. Brian Van Gorder's Eagle defense has stood its toughest test of the day. Appalachian driving the length of the field, looking to punch it in for the first time, and on fourth down, inside the five, being denied at the one-yard line. Welcome back to Statesboro, where Georgia Southern has put together a stellar defensive stand. Peyton Award candidate Kevin Richardson, who had more yards on one carry in the second half, trying to get the first down by the goal line, but you can see by the reaction, he didn't get it. And Georgia Southern's defense answers the call, and the Eagles take over on downs. And Brian Van Gorder, the Georgia Southern head coach, wants a championship caliber defense, and that's what you do and how to build one when you play in the number one ranked team in the country. And Georgia Southern coming out with a little hurry up from a huddle, giving the ball quickly to Lamar Lewis, trying to catch Appalachian's defense off guard. But you know, Jamie, that's very tough to do. It absolutely is. The number one rated defense in the Southern Conference is they want to bow up and get a big stop here and get the ball back in great field position. No gains, still at the one yard line for Georgia Southern. You talked about that app defense. Tops and scoring defense in the conference, passing defense, total defense, rushing defense, and among the nation's top 30 in 11 different defensive categories. Georgia Southern continues to try to get a little breathing room on the ground, but again, against these Mountaineers, pushing them around is a very difficult thing to do. It certainly is. Only giving up 12 points a game. Under three yards of rush. They've only given up three rushing touchdowns all year long, so they have been impressive. Three yard pickup there. Brings about a third and seven. Jerry Moore's decision to go for it close to the goal line on fourth down gives it a field goal, a field position thing here as Clark tries to find his tight end. Scarborough overthrows him, and quickly it's fourth down, and Georgia Southern has to punt. So again, as I was mentioning, in field position, App's decision not bad because the defense makes it hold up. Well, it's awfully tough to do when you play in a Mountaineer defense as good as they are when you have the ball inside your one. You still want to make a big mistake and hopefully give your punter some breathing room. So Dan Jordan on to punt, backed up to the backside of his own end zone. Dexter Jackson awaits the punt out quickly. He'll be able to return it from the 40. Jackson, the top punt returner in the Southern Conference, picks up about 10 yards on the return. And Appalachian will be in tremendous field position shape at the Georgia Southern 30-yard line. We'll see what they do in a moment. All the there has been homecoming happiness at Georgia Let's Southern. Go, the Eagles lead 7-3 here in the Let's third go, quarter. Eagles. Be sure to join us tonight Let's on Sports go, South for some thrilling NHL action as Todd Bertuzzi and the Florida Panthers try to cool off the Southeast Division leading Atlanta Thrashers. That's tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time, right here on Sports South. Appalachian with tremendous field position, starting at the Georgia Southern 29-yard line. The Mountaineers have been held out of the end zone all day, but Armandi Edwards again calling his own number and again finding a running room inside. Inside the 20 for first down yardage as the Mountaineers will move the chains. Well, that's design, and what they're doing is they're spreading the field with five wide receivers. 
And Edwards is just running the quarterback draw, just picking his spot, picking his running lanes. They're just spreading the field, spreading out those Eagle defenders and let, letting Edwards just do a lot of stuff on his own. And his knee went down shy of first down yardage, so he throws quickly to T.J. Corman. The pass is incomplete, and it's going to bring about a third and inches as the spot came behind the 20-yard line. Armonte's head had cleared the 20, but was not quite first down yardage and again a quick kind of pass very low you can see the ball hit the ground Corman's fingertips squeezing as hard as he can but the pass coming up short and the Mountaineers have struggled through the air throughout this day so now it's third and less than a yard Corman in motion but Richardson gets the call he's got the first down yardage as he pushes his way toward the 15. A nice job up front running behind Scott Suttle, Jeremy Robertson, Kerry Brown, the interior part of that Mountaineer offensive line. Getting a nice push. Richardson, enough room to get that first down. A five yard pickup for Richardson. And Edwards again wants to throw, but again gets flushed. Runs inside the 10, puts his head down at the goal line. Touchdown, Armonte Edwards. What a run. What a run. He makes a move on senior linebacker Jason Earwood, then lowers the shoulder and shows a little power behind that 165-pound frame to get in the end zone. He's put his shoulder down a couple of times today and been knocked away, but not this time. Armonte Edwards going 15 yards for the first Appalachian touchdown of the day as the Mountaineers take the lead. Julian Rausch kicks it through. Now 30 of 31 on his point afters. And most importantly for the Mountaineers, they grab a 10-7 lead. Armonte Edwards, we called him a difference maker and an impact freshman. He's made an impact with the first Appalachian touchdown of the day. Appalachian has grabbed its first lead of the day on a touchdown run from true freshman quarterback Armonte Edwards. He struggled in the air, Jamie, but not on the ground. Here's what a great quarterback can do for you. Watch Armani Edwards, the speed to get outside. Look at the juke on Jason Irwin. And then to finish the run with the power to get in the end zone. A quarterback like that, an athlete, puts so much pressure on a defense. What a tremendous play by the freshman. 129 yards rushing now for Armonte Edwards. And the two freshmen has given, have given the Mountaineers their first lead, Jason Foster takes the line drive kick at the goal line, looking for running room, shaking off one tackle, not finding room on the outside, but refusing to go down. Changing directions, and he's to the 40-yard line. Pushed out of bounds at the 45. What a return by Jason Foster. Absolutely an unbelievable effort and by Jason Foster. look at the emotions Foster. on the far sidelines. You know, football, game of momentum. Obviously, Appalachian State had it, and this, could, this play could give it back to the Eagles. Watch this effort. He seems to be running for about 20 seconds. The knee's almost down. He's arm tackled there, reverses field, shows the speed, and almost has enough speed to get around that corner. A 42-yard return by Jason Foster. An Appalachian player is down on the field. Chris Johnson. Sophomore linebacker. I'll take another look at Jason Foster. Again, here's a guy who played quarterback in the triple option a year ago. Brian Van Gorder wants the ball in his hands as a wide receiver, he's, sometimes a quarterback, but on special teams, he's very special here. He absolutely is. And you saw on that replay, his knee was just an inch or so away from hitting the ground. But it didn't. And he gets across the 40, and Georgia Southern on the reverse puts it in Foster's hands again. And again, he's got running room in Appalachian territory to the 28-27 yard line before being shoved out of bounds. Another big play by Jason Foster. You would think after that long kick return, Foster would need a little oxygen. <laughs> they come right back to the young man again as he's had some rushing attempts in this offense this year. I believe that's his third. 
And here reverse. is a guy that Brian Van Gorder said has not complained or griped in any way. It's about what can I do to help the team? And here he's helping them coming off the wing and running the football extremely well. A 30 yard pickup. This time it's Lewis and Lamar Lewis to the 20 and 19 before being brought down. Lamar Lewis, the junior transfer from Florida State with a fine run. Yeah, Lewis checks out Covington coming back in as Brian Van Gorder has a nice one two option at the running back position to take a look at Lewis running the left side of that offensive line opening up a huge hole for the transfer. A nine yard pickup gives the Eagles a second and one inside the Appalachian 20 yard line. Clark from the shotgun quick toss. Raja Andrews fights for first down yardage and more inside the 15 pushed out around the 12 yard line moving the chains once again. And, you know you'd mentioned Jason Foster and what he did for this football team by switching positions but think of all the guys that had to make adjustments as he totally revamped what Georgia Southern's philosophy was going to be going away from the traditional triple option to this multiple option off op, option offense completely revamped the offensive line these wide receivers they had to learn how to run routes again well they didn't have wide receivers that knew how to run pass routes didn't have a tight end at all no running backs to speak of and in an offense like this though they had plenty of guys who could run the ball and no true quarterback they've got that in the transfer Travis Clark who came from Southern Miss Chris Covington on the run there again the strong guy between the tackles hits the holes and then they were worried about the offensive line too. The size of the offensive line was somewhat small. They get a transfer in Brad Williams from Central Florida. He comes in at 290. Of course, Lane Lance Wayne, you know, really the leader of that offense, has done a tremendous job as well. They're center. And there were no fullbacks or tight ends in the system at all. But Sean Gray is in to block from the fullback spot here. Travis Clark under center. And Chris Covington, the deep back, off the play action. Clark wants to throw into the end zone intended I'm trying to hit Mike McIntosh over the middle on a crossing route McIntosh a little upset with himself because he did get his hands on the football got to make Thinks that play. he should have had it transfer from the University of Florida of course these guys anytime they get their hands on the ball they think they should catch it You see it went right through, right through it was a hands. laser beam perhaps a little too hard down there that close and over the last couple of minutes we've mentioned the word transfer a lot remember 27 players left this program after February 13 new transfers transfers into Georgia Southern third and seven from inside the 10 a little quick back toss dropped by Lamar Lewis it's incomplete Lewis thinking about the end zone and needed to be thinking about the football that's right and those are the things that are going to drive Brian Brian Van Gorder crazy not executing not finishing the play just a simple little thing a catching a football Lewis could have had that first down perhaps scoring had he just concentrating on catching that football then worrying about the run nice call here as they're trying to get the flow one way throwing back the other to the speedy Lewis and just drops the football. Patrick Bolin on to try to tie the game. He'll be attempting a 26, almost 27 yard try. He's three for five on the year, and the snap is down, kick is up, and he's right through the uprights. So Patrick Bolin, who kicked two field goals a week ago, kicks another today, and it ties the game at 10. And most importantly, Jamie, for Georgia Southern, they answer the first Appalachian touchdown by putting points on the board. Yeah, we talk about football being a game of momentum. The Mountaineers had it, but I think the catalyst for this drive was Jason Foster's great kick return, showing great effort, getting the Eagles in great field position, really sparked him to get him going here in the third quarter. Well, Jamie, you mentioned the 13 transfers. Brian Van Gorder really needed to bring players in here just to be competitive in a conference like the Southern Conference. And here are the 13. You can see several are starting. And Coach Van Gorder made the point, none of these guys were playing elsewhere. Most of them are freshmen or sophomores. So everyone is new in making the transition here at Georgia Southern. And, and look where they're transferring from. You know, they're not transferring from chopped liver. I mean, you're talking about <laughs> yeah, right. Florida, 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 Florida. Florida State, Georgia, Georgia, Central Florida, Michigan State, Mississippi State. This is some talented guys here in Statesboro, and they're and they're guys that will fit into the system 
on both sides of the ball the systems that Brian Van Gorder and his coaching staff wanted want to run. And as you would think guys from programs like that would have talent and coach Van Gorder went out and found some guys who are not only had talent but had hunger because they weren't playing at those schools and he's giving them an opportunity to play here at Georgia Southern. Midway through the third quarter and Georgia Southern has tied things up with the nation's number one team. The kick is away and James Hill fields it inside his own 10 looking for running room but the Eagles not providing any as they slam him down he doesn't reach the 20 so a nice job on kick coverage by Georgia Southern there. So Appalachian coming off its most impressive offensive drive of the day. Will get the ball inside their own 20 yard line and true freshman quarterback Armand Edwards who has run for 129 yards on the day including that impressive touchdown run on the last possession takes over at his own 18 yard line and again spread in the field you see five wide receivers no running backs just Edwards back there in that spread formation three wide receivers to his right and Edwards off the quarterback draw hit at the line of scrimmage and then dropped as he spins and tries to find running room the Georgia Southern defense again answering that call talked about the Appalachian offense Jamie you know coach Moore had described it a lot like that motion offense Urban Meyer plays at Florida he says we don't look like an option offense but we are yeah they do and then obviously the catalyst is this young man Armani Edwards and you know, he does a terrific job of running the football. He's going to make some, have to make some improvements in this area of his game and throw in the football, but this is what he does when things break down. He can create such great stuff for it. He tucks and runs, and John Mooring over to make sure he doesn't get much more than a yard or two. It'll bring up third and long. We'll take a look at the two quarterbacks, Jamie. Armonte Edwards has struggled through the air, and Travis Clark's number is not all that impressive, as we mentioned in the first half and heard from Coach Van Gorder, who was not happy about his offensive play. Clark has missed a number of open receivers. Yeah, obviously, they're both struggling in the passing game, but where Edwards has been so dominant is running the football. Edwards over 130 yards rushing, facing a third and about five. Make it six. Edwards, a little bit of time. Pocket collapses. He loses the football. Appalachian recovers. But Sherrod Taylor in from his defensive end position hit Edwards in the blind side and coughed it up. And the big Kyle Knox was Johnny on the spot to cover it up. And the big fella showing leadership. Guys, this is how we're going to do it. As he beats Eisenhower off the edge and hits Edwards off the blind side. Edwards had no chance, fumbles the football. Senior Kyle Knox able to dive on it and keep it from being another turnover. But Appalachian will be forced to punt, and the Georgia Southern defense has done it one more time. Jason Foster has to backpedal, calls for the fair catch, and holds on to the football. Makes the catch at the 32-yard line. Beautiful punt by Adam Kasouf. As Jason Foster not given an opportunity to do some of the damage he's already done. And we talked a lot about this program being start restarted back in 1982 by the great Irk Russell, who passed away tragically on September the 8th. And senior wide receiver Teddy Kraft, who died in a motorcycle accident on July the 5th. The team, as you can see, wearing TC and Irk emblems on their helmets to remember their fallen teammate and former head coach. This is Jason Foster shaking off a tackle and finding some running room across the 40. First down yardage and a flag flies on the far side of the field. Another nice play by Jason Foster. Yeah, he stepped up big over the last couple possessions, last two possessions for this Eagle offense and in special teams. But holding will negate the play. And a nice pickup for the Eagles will have to come back. Holding number 86 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's Reggie McCutcheon called for the hold. 
senior wide receiver who Jamie mentioned had the huge game a week ago 191 receiving yards but Jason Foster having a big day here as you can see him shake tackles but Jamie the holding call will drive coach Van Gorder crazy uh, absolutely left part of your screen you'll see the hold 86 can't see the number it's on but you see his right hand on the under that shoulder pad holding the Appalachian State defender and obviously it's from the point of the infraction so it's first and about 12. First and 12 on the option pitch Lewis looking for running room Appalachian covering up and Lewis goes down loss of yardage on the play but laundry goes down as well the yellow flags are out one more time and that time the Mountaineers showing great pursuit you got to do that and with a guy like Lewis who's so quick and it looks like Lewis is a little banged up Lamar Lewis is limping off face mask number 27 on the defense five yard penalty from the previous spot replay first down we'll take a look Lamar Lewis limping off we mentioned on the face mask penalty Jamie now watch his knee buckle right there. It's like Cam Spear, the number eight, uh, Jeremy Wiggins in on the tackle there. And Spear appears to be the one who grabbed the face mask, so it moves things to about a first and seven situation. Perhaps first and a short seven. Clark under center. Gives to Covington, who puts his head down. Not much happening between the tackles there. A gain of a yard, maybe two. Late third quarter, all even here in Statesboro. 10-10. It's Georgia Southern and top-ranked Appalachian. And uh, Georgia Southern abandoning the triple option, but as we talked about in the first half, they still have a pretty productive run game, averaging 180 per game. But we haven't had a chance too much to see Chris Covington who came in as in as their leading rusher, almost 600 yards on the season. Well, with Lamar Lewis having limped off. Covington could be getting his opportunity. Now it is again between the tackles, pushing the pile to the 45 yard line. It's first down yardage for the Eagles. Yeah, how about that offensive line that time? Your Corey Green, Lance Wayne, Estrada, the interior part of that offensive line getting a great push off that football and Covington as you mentioned earlier Paul a guy that really hits the hole hard just, just following his blockers and Lance Wayne the center you mentioned him he's married just had a baby girl this week congratulations one of two players on that offensive line who are parents Brad Williams the other he's got two children married Covington again Puts his shoulder down, positive yardage out toward midfield. Pick up a four, maybe five, and Georgia Southern on the ground. As Marquise Maynard checks in for Covington. You can see the rushing yards, Georgia Southern, after the gain of five, inching closer to what Appalachian has done, and most of App's numbers have been from their freshman quarterback as Brian Van Gorder has installed this multiple offense. He's been getting the job done on the ground and through the air. Second and five. Travis Clark wants Maynard on his other side. This time Maynard with a carry. Gets three, four. Inside Appalachian territory down to about the 46-yard line. It'll bring up a third and short for the Eagles as time starts to run out here in the third quarter. It's a four yard pickup for Maynard and a tie game as we head to the fourth quarter. It's homecoming here in Statesboro where the hometown Eagles have been impressive from the opening kick. Appalachian may own the national championship and the nation's number one ranking, but they are in a place they have not won since 1996 and their win streak in jeopardy today as Georgia Southern has kept the homecoming crowd on its feet in a 10-10 game as we head to the fourth quarter. Southern Conference football on Sports South is being brought to you by Carolina Ford, where bold moves happen every day. By BB&T, there's opportunity here. By Food Lion, good neighbors, great prices. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance.
Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. Down the road from Savannah. Third and short and a very quick hurry up by Georgia Southern. It looks like they have first down yardage as Chris Covington was given the ball in a hurry. Georgia Southern getting another first down. And as we enter the fourth quarter, Jamie, this is one of the areas where Coach Van Gorder was telling us yesterday that his team, with all it's had to take in and, and uh, handle with all the changes, he needs them to play 60 minutes. Yeah, finish the drill, so to speak. They did it last week in their big win over Elon. And here we got a couple, uh, one more quarter to go, 15 minutes. He wants to see him do it once again. First and 10 inside Appalachian Territory. This is Marquise Maynard and the door being slammed shut by Omar Byram there. Yeah, here's where you're going to try to see the Mountaineers bow up because they've been run upon on this drive. You know, the Eagles have been going to the ground behind Chris Covington. And uh, that time they do a nice job on first down to stop them. No gain. Brings about a second and ten. You can see the numbers through three quarters. Fairly even. But Armonte Edwards, the big individual star for Appalachian in particular, the freshman quarter with most of that yardage on the ground. Lewis returns to the game. Flags fly. Lewis with a nice gain on second down. But we'll see what the referees have to say. Hey, he's back from that injury. And the nice pickup by Lewis appears to be negated. And Brian Van Gorder, not happy. No, not at all. Holding number nine on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. That's another wide receiver on the hold and another former quarterback from the triple option days, Darius Smiley. That's three or four on the day at the wide receiver position of, of holding because they're trying to block out in that perimeter. But you know what? They're learning, <laughs> you know, having to learn how to do that. These guys, a lot of them being former quarterbacks. Third and short becomes second and very long. Second and about 15. Under heavy pressure, gets the ball out to Lewis. He's got some running room at the 40. First down yardage and more. A flag flies as Lewis flies inside the 10. But we'll see what the flag is about. Lamar Lewis taking the short pass out of the backfield, turning it into a big gain. But again, a flag is down. A yeah, great call by the Georgia Southern offense. They're getting the flow one way, throwing back to Lewis. And another hold negates another big gain. You know, the only blocker I saw out there was Big Brad Williams. Holding number 86 on the offense. Ten yard penalty for the spot of foul. Replay, second down. Another wide receiver on the hold. That's Reggie McCutcheon for the second time today. And he's not happy about it. Take a look at the right, left part of your screen. You see 86 on eight, left hand. Right at the left part of your screen. You see Lamar Lewis racing down that sideline. Brad Williams did a nice job of freeing him up. There's the hold right there. And the tough thing for Georgia Southern is the hold was in an area that would not have been part of that play. Lewis didn't need that help to gain that yardage. Referees stopping the play clock. Georgia Southern pushed back to the Appalachian 47 yard line. I should say 42 yards. They want the game clock to have five seconds added to it. And the Eagles making things more difficult for themselves with all these penalties against the top rated defense in the Southern Conference. That's the kind of thing when you start grabbing momentum can bring it to a screeching halt. They don't need to give Appalachian any help. You know, and you talk, we talked about Brian Van Gorder about his team wanting his team to finish the game and to concentrate and do the right things Well, they're making the mental mistakes on this drive. Most of the fourth quarter still to play. We've got a 10 10 game but a second and nine for the Georgia Southern Eagles from the Appalachian 42 yard line Travis Clark under center Chris Covington the deep back under pressure Clark Fights off one would-be tackler, lets it fly in the direction of McCutcheon, who was hit 
Crowd would like a flag. Won't get it. It's an incomplete pass. And Travis Clark doing a nice job on that play just to avoid the big sack. You know, they've done a good job. No sacks to a team that's leading the conference in sacks. You'll see Morrell right there just cannot hang on. Clark showing power, presence of mind to get himself out of the pocket. See Marcus McCut Morrell, the Buck Buchanan Award candidate, doesn't miss many. That's a tough throw on the run for Clark. Third and long, Clark on the run, has a man in Raja Andrews, but he's forced out of bounds. Andrews has the football, but not the first down. That's a nice pass. It's a little, little too high, a little too wide. Andrews makes the nice grab, but he's ran out of real estate. It's a nice throw on the run. He's under pressure once again. Andrews goes high, can't get that foot in bounds. In the National Football League, if you get pushed out of bounds, it's a referee's call to be able to bring it, call it a catch, but not his here. you got to get that foot well, in. Well, his momentum was, <laughs> it was not that close. No. So with that, Dan Jordan is on to punt. And field position will play an important role as we reach the meat of the fourth quarter. Jordan punting to Dexter Jackson, who calls for the fair catch. Inside is 10 at the five-yard line. So Appalachian will start from there. We're all tied in Statesboro with 13-17 to play in the fourth quarter. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. We're tied 10-10 here in the fourth quarter. And, Jamie, true freshman quarterback Armandi Edwards was asked to run this offense. Now he's being asked to carry this team today. Yeah, and he's played well, especially in the running game. In the first half, you were impressed, or we were impressed with his athletic ability. Look at that move right there. But in the second half, what I've been blown away by is his toughness. Look at his power. He's 165 pounds, and that's probably soaking wet as he rolls over the Georgia Southern defender there to get in the end zone. And he's done that on more than one occasion, 124 yards so far through three quarters. He's played well, particularly in the run game. And he's backed up inside his own 10-yard line to start first and 10. He sends William Mayfield in motion, and from the shotgun, the give to Kevin Richardson. Richardson looking for running room and not finding much as that Georgia Southern defensive line has done a nice job today, but will he be asked to do much more here in the fourth quarter? Yeah, they need to get their go-to running back, Kevin Richardson, but here's a situation where you're backed up inside your 10, and if you're that true freshman, you got to be careful with that football. A couple turnovers today by Edwards. Gain of a yard on the play. It'll be second and nine. This no huddle offense changing the play now at the line of scrimmage. Edwards from the shotgun again gives it to Richardson who's got some running room this time across the 15 he loses the football. Going the other way is Ronnie Wiggins for the touchdown. The Georgia Southern defense forcing another turnover and this time turning it into points with a defensive score. And Coach Van Gorder wanted a championship-style defense. They bow up on fourth down earlier in this half to stop Appalachian State when they were about to score. Now they put six on the board to help out the offense as they strip Kevin Richardson and return the fumble for a touchdown. Richardson coughing up the football and Ronnie Wiggins scooping it up. The red shirt freshman taking it in for the touchdown. That has given the Eagles the lead. Remember what they say, offense wins games, defense wins championships. And on this day, Brian Van Gorder would just like to see it win a homecoming game. Hey, a great goal line stand earlier in the third quarter. And now the strip, fumble, touchdown by Wiggins and that Eagle defense. Jason Earwood, the middle linebacker, forcing the fumble. Wiggins picking it up and running it in for the touchdown. Patrick Bolin on to try the extra point and add to the Eagle lead. It's good, and Georgia Southern has regained the lead at 17-10. Jason Earwood and Ronnie Wiggins coming up with the biggest defensive plays on the day. As Kevin Richardson, Appalachian's Peyton Award candidate, coughs it up. 
Ronnie Wiggins with a touchdown that has given Georgia Southern a 17-10 lead on homecoming here in Statesboro. Welcome back to Georgia Southern where the Eagles have grabbed the lead 17-10. After the touchdown, there was unsportsmanlike conduct on number 35 on the kicking team. After on the extra point, there was a personal foul roughing the kicker on the receiving team. Those penalties will offset. So we get the explanation, and the end result is the ball will be kicked from the 35-yard line. And this homecoming crowd has come to life once again as Georgia Southern has grabbed the lead. James Hill fields the ball at the 10. Running room at the 20 on his feet at the 25 before he's forced down, but a flag on the play. Here's another look at the fumble by Kevin Richardson. Yeah, watch, it, watch 52. Jason Earwood's left hand right there knocks the ball out. Rico Zachary hitting him at the same time. Richardson gets stripped. Wiggins there to pick it up on the hop. And he's got the speed to get the around the team. edge. Five yards will be administered in the end of the run. First down. Penalty on Georgia Southern during the kick. Tack five on the return. Just over 12 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Georgia Southern trying to pull off what would be a significant upset. But Brian Van Gorder's Eagles, as we've talked about all day, completely revamped on both sides of the ball. The work in progress has shown signs of working and really done so today. Appalachian has been on a tremendous roll, winning six in a row, coming off the national championship a year ago, the nation's number one ranking. As Richardson finds running room tough to find between the tackles to about the 34-yard line, pick up a, of one maybe two and if you notice on that run by Richardson who fumbled on his previous carry both <laughs> both arms around that football Richardson holding on gaining two yards on the carry bringing about a second and eight as the clock continues to tick Armani Edwards the freshman quarterback from the shotgun wants to throw in the air has a man in Mayfield first down yardage and much more breaking a tackle and running for daylight inside the 20 William Mayfield with a touchdown that answers Georgia Southern score William Mayfield bringing Appalachian right back that's a quick strike Edwards to Mayfield and Mayfield showing great speed and the ability to break some tackles Showing good balance and obviously the breakaway speed to tie or put them one point behind Georgia Southern. A 65 yard touchdown as Appalachian answers the Georgia cut Southern score in quick fashion. Two plays, a minute 12, and they're within an extra point of tying the game. Julian Roush on to try it. He boots it through, and just like that, we've got ourselves a tie game. Armandi Edwards hooking up with William Mayfield, the senior wide receiver, with his fifth touchdown catch of the year. But none more important is this one, as it's helped Appalachian tie the game on the road. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia, where Appalachian has quieted this hometown crowd with a 65-yard touchdown pass from Armandi Edwards to William Mayfield. Yeah, that play should not have happened. I mean, Georgia Southern in a three-deep zone, and Rico Zachary, the free safety, just misses the tackle. You'll see number one backpedaling there. Mayfield does a nice job of finding the soft spot, but this is a brilliant play on his part. Individual effort, big-time run after the catch for the touchdown. And Mayfield, big, six foot two, 220 pounds, and as we can see, he's got a little giddy-up as well. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. A big receiver that can run for the Mountaineers. Hey, and two years ago, he was the team's starting linebacker. Started all 11 games at linebacker. I'd say he's made the transition to wide receiver <laughs> extremely well. So now Appalachian kicks it away, and Georgia Southern will bring things back. 
This is Marquise Maynard finding a little hole, but not as much as he wants. Fired up across the 30, but pretty good field position for the Eagles. Oh, another nice return. Almost busted that one. Yeah, he and Jason Foster. A good duo back there for that Eagle kick return game. 28 yard return. Puts the Eagles in business at their own 33 yard line officially. Sean Gray, the fullback, goes in motion. Clark wants to throw. Again, flushed from the pocket, forced to throw it away. He did have Lamar Lewis in the neighborhood. We're in Statesboro, Georgia, where it's homecoming, and Georgia Southern has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with top-ranked Appalachian State. We're tied at 17. Paul Crane, Jamie Newberg, and our Sports South crew on a beautiful day for football with two of the powerhouses in the Southern Conference. Second and 10 for Travis Clark and the Georgia Southern Eagles from their own 33 Lewis the transfer from Florida State trying to make Mountaineers miss but finding no running room fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage if that and it'll be third and long for the Eagles. Yeah, that Mountaineer defense looks like they got a little more used the word a few minutes ago giddy up and and what they're doing right now shutting down the Eagles on these first two plays of this possession. In the previous play, they read the screen. This one, they just stuff Lewis right at the point of attack. Georgia Southern, three for 11 and third down conversions, facing a third and 10 here against a defense that's one of the best in the country at stopping teams on third down. Quick toss to McCutcheon, makes the catch, but nowhere near first down yardage, and Georgia Southern will have to punt. Yeah, and these are the type of things that, you know, Brian Van Gorder wants to see out of his offense. You know, move the chains when it's third and third and eight, third and six. You know, play good defense. Keep everything in front of you. Instead, they give up the big pass, pass play. So he's looking for that consistency, and it hasn't been there. So Dan, Dan Jordan on to punt it away to Dexter Jackson. Mentioned that Jackson, the number one punt returner in the Southern Conference, ranks fourth nationally with an average of just under 20 yards a return. We have not seen a return like that yet. Big punt off the foot of Jordan. Jackson with an opportunity at the 15. Georgia Southern special teams chasing him down, and he'll lose yardage on that. Jackson dumped at the 10-yard line, and Georgia Southern gets the job done. Great coverage on the special teams, and now the defense will be asked to step out and stop this Appalachian State offense once again. And the Georgia Southern defense has certainly been up to the challenge today, Jamie. Yeah, they certainly have. They've, they've created these turnovers. You saw the strip there. They shut down App Appalachian State on fourth and goal. They're getting some momentum. The defense has played pretty well in spots. You see Jason Irwin causing the fumble. Wiggins there to pick it up to give him the go-ahead score. They do something like that. Then they give up the big play uh, by Mayfield, the wide receiver from Appalachian State. So and they played well in spots, but not dominant as a whole. Edwards wants to throw from his own nine-yard line. Throws it away with no one open. Good job there by the Eagle defense. Edwards has struggled through the air, but he certainly has one enormous play. The 65-yard touchdown pass to William Mayfield in the last possession that has tied this game at 17. But for the most part, Edwards has done his damage today on the ground, having rushed for 127 yards. This time he gives it to Richardson. He holds on to the football. Gets across the 15 to about the 16 or 17 yard line. It'll be third and long for the Mountaineers. And I'm surprised over the last couple of possessions that Armani Edwards hasn't called his own number on a few occasions, which he did so so much in that really the first two and a half, three quarters of this football game. Three yard pickup for Richardson. Gives the Mountaineers third and seven from their own 17 yard line. Edwards looking, throws over the middle, has Richardson out of the backfield, who's got running room across the 40. To midfield, inside Georgia Southern Territory, another big play through the air for the Mountaineers. Again, 
you know, very impressive what Appalachian State's doing. Nothing fancy. They're just spreading that Eagle defense out. That time, you know, Richardson finds the soft spot. He beats Zachary, Rico Zachary, the free safety, and he's off to the races. You oh. see Zachary right there, number one, just slipped. And Richardson doing some open field damage with a huge gain. A 46-yard pickup for Kevin Richardson. 111 yards on two passing plays, and Richardson fumbles the football. Blue shirts diving onto it, and look at that. Ronnie Wiggins again. Johnny on the spot for the second time here in the second half. Just when it looked like Appalachian had started to make a move, that Georgia Southern defense forces the turnover again off the exchange it was devon moore who could not hold on Moore being brought into the game loses the football and ronnie wiggins the one who recovers it yeah that's the third time they've botched a handoff the previous two they recovered their own fumble but remember on the previous play with richardson and the big pass reception he goes out of the game to get some air they bring in more that exchange, a big break Georgia for Georgia Southern, Southern. Has taken care of the football, but Appalachian is not the fourth turnover of the day. That's tough and to win any place, but especially on the road. Lamar Lewis finds a little running room inside. Cross the 45, a nice pickup for the transfer from Florida State. And the Eagles will have second and short. Approach the seven minute mark here in the fourth quarter of a tie game. The Mountaineers have lost five straight times here in Statesboro, four in the regular season, once in the playoff. the playoffs. They have not won here at Paulson Stadium since 1996. Just when it looked like they were about to crawl out of a hole, Georgia Southern has answered the call again. Lewis inside, first down yardage at midfield. Georgia Southern will move the chains. The clock continues to tick in a tie ball game. A nice job up front. You know, center Lance Wayne and those interior linemen getting a good push off that football, off the line of scrimmage. And it's got to be hard for those linebackers to find Lewis because he's five, five foot nine. But look at the push they get. And Lewis just kind of sneaking in there behind the offensive lineman, looking for that little space, that, that little space, that little crease to run through it. On the right side, that right tackle, Junior Russell Orr. Considered a leader of that offensive line, leading the charge against Marcus Morrell. This is Covington looking for running room on the right side. Nice pickup on first down. As Georgia Southern continues to inch its way into Appalachian territory. Nowhere near field goal range yet, but they're at about the 45-yard line of the Mountaineers, and Covington doing it on the, on the ground here. Yeah, the nice spin move right there. And this multiple offense of Brian Van Gorder again is second in the Southern Conference in total offense, 17th in the nation, as the Eagles are grasping hold of what the coach wants to see. And right now he wants to see more on the ground as Chris Covington goes off tackle. You know, you throw out those numbers with what Georgia Southern's done offensively this year, and it's kind of mind-boggling considering when Brian Van Gorder and his staff got here, they really thought they had no pieces really to run this offense. Then they get the influx of the transfers. Guys are changing positions. They've worked hard, and they're progressing each week, and it's coming along. Two-yard gain brings up a third and a long three. An important opportunity for Georgia Southern here. Just three of 12 on third down conversions. Clark from the shotgun. Flags fly just a moment. Somebody must have jumped. Some illegal motion against Georgia Southern. The expected call. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 86 on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. So again, Brian Van Gorder's guys flagged. And once again, Reggie McCutcheon, at least his third flag on him today, turning third 
and reasonably short into third and rather long. Now a third and eight for Travis Clark. Who wants Lamar Lewis on his left side from the shotgun. Play clock down to about six. Clark steps up, looks for McCutcheon, diving, can't hold on. Led him just a little bit too far. Reggie McCutcheon needed a little more air under that ball. Boy, he showed good separation once that ball was in the air, laid out for it, and almost made a brilliant catch. He's the receiver that had the monster game last week with 191 receiving yards to break the school record. Watch the one-handed grab almost by Mr. McCutcheon. Coming into the day, the Appalachian defense had held opponents to 28.8% on third down conversion, number 10 in the nation, and it's better than that today as Georgia Southern just three of 13 now on third downs. And again, Dexter Jackson this time has to let it go. It takes a Georgia Southern bounce to about the 15-yard line. So Dan Jordan may not have started out the way he wanted, but it ends up being rather effective. So in a field position game now, Appalachian will begin deep in its own territory, a 33-yard punt with just over four minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Things are all even at 17-7, a 17-17. And here's another look at how things got going. It's Travis Clark hit Raja Andrews. A nice catch for the 21-yard touchdown. After a field goal had brought Appalachian within 7-3, Armani Edwards with a touchdown run. Then the defensive touchdown as Ronnie Wiggins recovered the fumble and took it in for the score before Edwards hit William Mayfield, who ran 65 yards. That's where we stand. Things all even at 17. And you can see that Armani Edwards has done a lot of damage on the ground. He's had a couple of big throws on two pass plays in particular. Appalachian has dominated the offensive stats. But as we've talked about, Jamie, Georgia Southern has gotten the job done defensively, especially in the turnover column where App has coughed it up four times. Well, that's amazing that they're in the game with that minus four turnover ratio. Quick toss out to Kevin Richardson. As you had mentioned, coming out of the first half Appalachian needed to get Richardson more involved they've tried it's but it's been a hot and cold thing in the but second he, half in the second half they have gone to on the ground with him a little bit more but they got him involved in the passing game with three big receptions and he's a, he has 100 yards receiving on three receptions in the second half so now it's third and about four for Appalachian from its own 21 yard line big play for the Appalachian offense Armandi Edwards changing things at the line steps back into the shotgun gives it to Richardson pushes his way toward the 25 yard line it depends on the spot but it looks like he would need to cross the 25 to get the first down and if he's shy Jerry Moore will certainly have an interesting decision here if it is fourth down with the clock ticking less than two and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter of a tie game. Now they're saying it's fourth down. Three yard pickup for Richardson. Fourth and less than a yard as we approach the two minute mark of the fourth quarter. Appalachian on the road where Georgia Southern on homecoming has matched them play for play. Clock continues to tick. And it looks like Appalachian's going to let it go down, call the timeout, and make a decision on the sideline. Time running out. Could it be running out on Appalachian's win streak? We'll find out when we come back. What? Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia, where Appalachian and Georgia Southern are all even. Under two minutes to play here in the fourth quarter, and to the surprise of no one, Jerry Moore is elected to punt on fourth and short, but we'll see if he actually kicks it away, and he does. Jason Foster not going to touch it, so it takes a big Georgia Southern bounce, is touched by Appalachian at the 43-yard line, so the Eagles will have pretty good field position and just a little bit of clock left, a minute 41, with which to do something. 
And we'll see if they're able to work their way down to at least field goal position. For what it's worth, Patrick Boland's longest field goal of the year, 39 yards, so they'll need several first downs. Yeah, they're going to need about to 40. achieve that. They're going to need about 40 yards or so against one of the top defenses in the country, the number one rated defense in a many categories in the Southern Conference. First and 10 from the 43 yard line, Travis Clark in the shotgun. Little shovel pass to Lewis, but that was bottled up quickly by it looks like Pierre Banks. That was a keeps that from being much of a gain at all. That was a great play by Pierre Banks. Check out number 31. You see him right in the middle of your screen. He's reading Lewis all the way and comes up and makes the big stop. So now a minute 20 to play here in the fourth quarter. All tied at 17. Looks like Appalachian and Georgia Southern has taken a timeout. As Darren Hinshaw, the Eagles offensive coordinator, would like to talk things over, giving Appalachian an opportunity to talk with their defense as well. Again, Appalachian coming in with a dominating defense. But Georgia Southern has been impressive as well. Today's BB&T player of the game is Appalachian quarterback Armonte Edwards. On behalf of Armonte Edwards, BB&T will make a contribution to the General Scholarship Fund of the Southern Conference. At the end of the year, the money will be divided among the member institutions. And Armonte Edwards has had a heck of a day on the ground in particular. A pair of big pass plays, one a 65-yard touchdown pass, which has tied this game. And what a player he is for this offense, this spread offense. He's the type of athlete you want back there. Obviously, being a young player, only a freshman, he's going to get better in the passing game. But right now, he is a lethal weapon running that football. Less than a minute and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Second and ten for the Georgia Southern Eagles from their own 42. Travis Clark steps up, and now he wants to run. Looking for room across midfield, run out of bounds, shy of first down yardage, but a pickup of about eight on the play. It'll bring about a third and short situation for the Eagles. Most importantly, though, it stops the clock with a minute 14 to play in the fourth quarter. Well, yeah, he picked up positive yardage there on second down and long, showing good speed, getting out of bounds, stop that clock. Now it sets up third and short. An eight yard pickup making it third and two. A minute 14 to play in the fourth quarter. Tie ball game here in Statesboro. Quarterback draw. Clark gets first down yardage inside the 45. And the first down will stop the clock for just a moment as the officials put the ball back in play. And the Eagles move the chains. Yeah, nice job there by Estrada and Orr, the right guard and right tackle. You see Travis Clark running right through Morrell to pick up that first down. And finds Raja Andrews on the quick toss. Andrews gets inside the 40 as the clock goes under a minute to play. Not yet in field goal range for Patrick Bolin. Eagles in a hurry up. It's under 50 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Travis Clark from the shotgun. Lamar Lewis to his right. Quick toss out to Jason Foster, who's hit and buried by guess who? Corey Lynch. Last week's Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week drops Foster before he can make anything happen, and there's a loss on the play. That was a big-time play by Corey Lynch. He came out of the safety position as he read that play all the way, showing good closing speed right there to make the big stop on Foster. Lynch 47, remind you of somebody? A guy in Denver, perhaps? Former Buccaneer, John Lynch. John Lynch, who's made a pretty good living with hits like that. You see Patrick Boland getting loose on the sidelines again. Longest field goal he's kicked this year is 39 yards. To have that same kind of distance would mean Georgia Southern would have to get down to the 22 yard line. But a loss of five on that swing pass out to Foster has pushed the Eagles in the wrong direction. With just over 36 seconds to play in the fourth quarter, Georgia Southern will have work to do to try to have a chance to score before time expires. 
And there you see Bolin's numbers on the year, three for five, 39 being the long. So obviously here, they got to get something going to give Mr. Bolin a shot. Third and nine, play action. Clark looking for time, but nobody open, throws it away. And on fourth down, Georgia Southern will have to punt 31 seconds to play and applying the pressure, Marcus Morrell. Yeah, how about the All-Americans stepping up when the Mountaineers really needed a great pass rush on that particular play? He blew it up, getting that pressure on Travis Clark, making him throw the ball out of bounds. So instead of Patrick Bolin, we get Dan Jordan, the punter. And a fair catch called for. And Appalachian, with 24 seconds to play, will have the opportunity for a couple of plays and see if they can do anything with it before both of these teams wind up going to overtime. The closing moments of the fourth quarter still to come here on Sports South. For those. Welcome back to Statesboro, where Brian Van Gorder's upstart Georgia Southern Eagles have made quite a stand on homecoming, going toe to toe with the nation's number one team, Appalachian State, the defending 1AA national champions of Jerry Moore, who have not won here in Statesboro since 1996. Jerry Moore, the winningest coach in Southern Conference history knows the feeling all too well he's decided to let the clock expire here in the fourth quarter and take his chances in overtime so georgia southern and appalachian have played 60 minutes of football and nothing has been decided yet as the game is tied at 17. yeah it's been a fantastic game we saw a little bit of defense in that first half the offenses opened up in the second half very exciting some big plays by both the offenses and the defenses and that Georgia Southern defense, which is the area that Coach Van Gorder really wanted to turn things around. You can see at the end of regulation, we're all even as Jerry Moore talking to his team and describing what it is he'd like to see happen. Now, again, they'll come out and have a coin toss. Each team will start at the 25-yard line and gets to keep the ball until it makes a first down or make their way into the end zone. The clock is not a factor. They'll turn that off. And... Starting with the third overtime, teams would be forced to go for two if they score a touchdown. And we'll just take it until we get ourselves a winner. But each team does get a possession in each of the overtimes. And the Georgia Southern defense, as I was going to say, has really stood strong. We've talked about them all day long, forcing four turnovers, which have been the difference in this game, Jamie. Yeah, they certainly have, because that has really given the Eagles a boost. They get a score off a turnover as well. They had the goal line stand, and here Wiggins picks up the fumble caused by Jason Earwood. So the defense starting to get toward, getting to playing towards what Brian Van Gorder wants. They just got to be more consistent. Now he needs his offense to step up a little bit here in overtime as well. Let's listen in on what happens with the coin toss. The other team will pick which end of the field we're going to play on for the first series of now. That's the first two possessions. Each team will have a right to possess the ball. We'll place it at the 25-yard line. Everybody gets one timeout. Both teams have one timeout for, for this overtime. Everybody understand? Appalachian State, what y'all's call going to be? Tails. Tails is the call. It is a tails. You want offense or defense? Doing defense. You want defense. Appalachian State has chosen defense. Georgia Southern, which end of the field would you like to play on? You want to defend the goal. Y'all want to play on this end of the field? Yeah, you want to defend. All right, gentlemen, we're going to play on this end of the field. Overtime period, one time out of peace. Well, as we heard, Jerry Moore's Mountaineers won the toss. And again, Jamie, no surprise that he has decided to go defense first. That way, when his team gets the ball, he'll know what he needs to do to win or tie the game. And this is the first ever overtime game here at Paulson Stadium in the regular season. We'll see what happens when we come back. For those who you are watching Sports South. The homecoming crowd is on its feet here at Georgia Southern. 
as the Eagles and top-ranked Appalachians are in overtime. And Georgia Southern with the ball first here in the overtime period. Travis Clark, play action, dumps it out to Lewis. Lewis to the 20, perhaps 19 before being brought down there. It'll be second down. What a terrific play by Marcus Morrell, the All-American defensive end, getting out on the corner to chase little Lamar Lewis down, the speedy running back from Georgia Southern. And they ran this play several times already today. And you're going to see Big 44 chase him down right there. Got a hand on a shoulder pad and brought him down. A gain of six on the play. Let's make it seven, second and three. Lewis changing direction inside the 15-yard line. First down yardage for the Eagles. Going to Lamar Lewis in the extra period in overtime. If you take a look at the replay, you see Subtle and the company, the center up front, doing a nice job of just creating enough room for Lewis to inch his way through, pick up enough for the first down. And moving the chains has little to do with the clock, but it gives a fresh set of downs for the Eagles as they try to work their way to the end zone. Clark goes under center. Lewis, the lone setback behind him. Wide receivers on either side. Clark appears to be changing the play, gives it to Lewis, tries to cut outside, spins back inside, little yardage, but Appalachian does a nice job of closing the hole. He's hard to get a handle on. I tell you, five foot nine, 200 pounds. Monty Smith and Marcus Morrell. Helping wrap up Lamar Lewis. He's the guy that the Georgia Southern coaches say can make you miss. Where Chris Covington is the one that really puts his head down and can push the pile. And Covington, the one in next to Travis Clarks. Gain of one on the play, second and nine. Covington with the football, trying to cut outside. Now turning up, putting his shoulder down at the 10 yard line. Gains positive yardage. But Georgia Southern will have to get inside the five-yard line to get a first down and a fresh set of downs to work its way to the end zone or try to settle for a field goal. That's what's at stake here on third down. 17-17 in the first overtime. Georgia Southern with the first possession of overtime. Third and five. Jason Foster, the man in motion. Clark. To his left, looking for Foster, incomplete. And now it's fourth down. Georgia Southern will have a decision. Yeah, somebody did something wrong on that play because you had Clark looking at Foster after the play going, what are you doing? I don't know if it was an incorrect route or Clark threw the ball in the wrong spot. But as we take a look at the replay, they roll that pocket to the left once again. Nice coverage there. You see Lynch, 47, angry with himself. He didn't pick off that pass. Well, that brings Patrick Bolin out for what will be a 27-yard field goal try here on the first possession of overtime, where every point is precious. Bolin's kick is up. It's perfect. Georgia Southern puts three on the board. Appalachian will now need to answer. But, of course, Jerry Moore will try to do better than that. So by electing to go on defense first, the Mountaineers know exactly what they need to do. Well, yes, they do. And the defending national champions, the number one ranked team in one double A football, challenged here in overtime by Georgia Southern as we take a look at what could be the game winning field goal. Well, it's given Georgia Southern a lead in overtime as Patrick Bolin is good from 27 yards. And now the Georgia Southern defense, which has answered the call so many times today, is being asked to do it one more time. The homecoming crowd on its feet. True freshman quarterback Armonte Edwards opens from the 25-yard line. Kevin Richardson inside the 20. A pickup of seven, maybe eight, depending on the spot. So positive yardage on first down for the Mountaineers. Yeah, that time going to their All-American running back and Kevin Richardson, center Scott Suttle leading on that play as they pick up a nice six, seven yards there on first down. Again, spread for 
So that spread offense, spreading out that football field. And Edwards has been deadly running that football. Pickup of seven, second and three. Off the play action, Edwards throwing for the end zone, but overthrowing his intended receiver. And it's incomplete. Kevin Richardson again coming out of the backfield has been a target in the air as well. And when the coaches review that play on film tonight or tomorrow, whenever they review their film, they're going to look at Edwards and know he missed Daniel Bettis, the number 80, the tight end wide open, just running like a little seam route. It would have been a touchdown had Edwards thrown the ball earlier to Mr. Bettis. Sophomore cornerback Brandon Jackson of the Eagles is down on the field. He's another of those transfers, came over from Central Michigan, where he played nine games as a true freshman and is the leader of the secondary for the Eagles in terms of interceptions. He has four interceptions on the season, but down here in overtime. Georgia Southern leading 20 to 17. Looks like he was cramping up and limping off now under his own power. Cramping up, they're chasing Armani Edwards all day. <laughs> and Appalachian facing a very important third and three. Needing a field goal to tie, a touchdown will win it here in overtime. The defending national champions being taken to the limit and then some here in Statesboro, Georgia. The Eagle defense has answered the call so many times here this afternoon. Third and three. Play action. Edwards calls his own number. Runs to the left. Has the first down yardage and dives inside the 10-yard line. Well executed play there. Again, center Scott Suttle leading the way. Watch now, big number 66 kicking out. And he get, delivers a great block on Bynum, the strong safety. And you see Edwards with the stop and go type of move just to get enough for the first down. As it kind of slowed him down a little bit in the running game, but he gets a big first down there. Did a nice job of waiting for the hole to materialize. Picked up 10 yards on the carry has moved Appalachian to the nine yard line needing a field goal to tie Edwards again running off tackle tackle but John Mooring one of many Eagles on top of him and keeping him shy of the five yard line yeah Mooring doing a nice job of just bottling up the elusive Armonte Edwards and it looks like he's hobbling a little bit look how he hits that hole Little gimpy, maybe on the previous play, injured an ankle, but uh, he's running not 100% right now, that being Armani Edwards. You can see his numbers in the air. Two big pass plays making up most of that 197 yards. Running to the left side, the pitch to Richardson, who's popped at the five-yard line and denied inside that. So the Georgia Southern defense again doing what it needs to do. That's Rico Zachary. And on third down, a huge play coming up for the Appalachian State Mountaineers who call their one timeout here in the overtime. As Jerry Moore would like to talk this over on third down from the five yard line. We'll be seeing the Appalachian State Mountaineers again next week on their home field in Boone for what's known as Black Saturday at Appalachian. The Furman Paladins will come visit 3.30 Eastern time right here on Sports South. Furman, the other unbeaten team in conference play coming into this weekend, both Appalachian and Georgia Southern still have Furman on their schedules and a huge game next week at Boone right here on Sports South. And so much of what will be at stake on that day at stake here right now for Appalachian. The Mountaineers, as we mentioned, unbeaten in conference play, own the nation's number one ranking. Appalachian's only loss on the year thus far, their season opener against North Carolina State of the ACC. Other than that, Appalachian has been perfect. But trailing by three in overtime. 
The Mountaineers, third and goal from the five-yard line. The end zone will win the game. If not, they'll try to kick a field goal to tie. The freshman quarterback, Armani Edwards, with Kevin Richardson to his left. From the shotgun on third and goal. Lob pass into the end zone for Mayfield. In and out of his hands, it's incomplete. And Dwayne Grace doing a nice job being matched up on the bigger receiver, Mayfield. Trying to throw a little fade route to the 220 pounder. He's six foot two. Edwards puts it up there, and you'll see Mayfield get his hands on it, but Grace with that right hand. Looks like he knocks it away right there. A nice play by Dwayne Grace, another of those transfers. Grace from Florida getting the job done. So now, Julian Roush, the top field goal kicker in the Southern Conference to tie the game. The kick is up, and it is good. Roush does it again, and this game is going to go to a second overtime. But this time, Appalachian will have the ball first, and Georgia Southern, when it gets it, will know what it has to do. Yeah, obviously, the advantage going second, but uh, hats off, really, to both defenses here. They stop uh, each other from getting in the end zone. The field goal kicker's coming through in the clutch with the big kick. Here you see Roush. He's expecting to do it. <laughs> no big deal. Again, Roush, the top field goal kicker in the conference, calmly puts it through. Ties the game at 20. And now both teams will get a chance to talk things over about what they want to do. And Jerry Moore's team, as we mentioned, has not won here since 1996. And that span covers five games, four of them in the regular season, one in the playoffs. So Jerry Moore knows what it's like to go to the wire and then some here in Paulson Stadium all too well. And he's done an unbelievable job with this program. So many wins, the leader in Southern Conference history, 17th season. Boy, he's coached under some great coaches. Tom Osborne, Hayden Fry, Kenny Hatfield. And with Brian Van Gorder coming in, changing so many things, but one thing that's staying the same, Jamie, is how evenly matched these two teams are. We've mentioned they played 21 times before today, and you just can't get any closer than this rivalry has been. Each team 10 wins, 10 losses, and one tie. And of course, that before the overtime rule was in effect, or we'd have had another one today. The rivalry goes back to the 1930s, and of course, had a long drought when Georgia Southern did not play football for 41 years. And you can see beyond the conference stakes for Appalachian, they're the number one team in the nation in 1AA and the defending national champions. But all of that at stake and on the line here in Statesboro right now. Yeah, and Georgia Southern unranked for the first time since 1996. But again, in a short time has come a long way under Coach Van Gorder. Jerry Moore has been here before as they change sides of the field. Again, here in the second overtime, Appalachian will start with the ball first. The Georgia Southern defense, which again has stood the stand so many times, now has to be on the field for back-to-back -back possessions by Appalachian. We'll see if that wears on them. Four full quarters and an overtime. And Armadi Edwards tucks and runs, wrapping him up is Larry Beard. Not much for Edwards there. Now it looks like they were looking for that one, and Beard does a nice job of fighting off his block. Beating number 51 there, Kyle Knox to corral and stop the elusive Armani Edwards Gain after just one. a short pickup, yeah. Larry Beard, the sophomore defensive end, makes it second and nine. Edwards looking to throw, fires to Mayfield, finds a seam to the 10-yard line, a first down for Appalachian. A nice route there by Mayfield because once he gets inside position on the smaller cornerback with that size, Ronnie Wiggins is five foot eight, 170 pounds. Mayfield 6'2, 220. You get inside position like he did, it's over. Gain of 13 on the play. Nice job by the Appalachian line to hold that pocket and give Edwards an opportunity to throw. First possession of the second overtime and a tie game here in Statesboro. 
first and 10 for the Mountaineers. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Richardson off right tackle inside the five. Kevin Richardson, the Peyton Award candidate, who's been held in check for much of the day today. He's done his biggest damage through the air, but an important run for the Mountaineers here. Yeah, it's, it's tremendous job of blocking up front. You see 51 knocks leading the way, but how about the job Eisers, Eisenhower did the right tackle and Robertson opening up that running room for Richardson. Second and three from the four. Richardson again looking for a hole, finding the end zone. Touchdown Appalachian. For Richardson, his 11th touchdown run of the year. But most importantly for the Mountaineers, it gives them a six-point lead. They'll try to make seven here in the second overtime. The Mountaineers executing well offensively going to the ground. They get the key pass to Mayfield to move the chains. Roush on to try the point after. It's good. And Appalachian has a seven-point lead here in the second overtime. So again, we mentioned Georgia Southern knows what it has to do. It has to do this, get to the end zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah they did, or they, they have to. And you see them following big number 52 into the end zone, excuse me, 62. Eisenhower and Richardson walks in. They're doing a nice job of just pushing the Eagles off that line of scrimmage, going to the run game with the one key pass. Well, Kevin Richardson had scored touchdowns in 12 games in a row before last week. He's got another one today. You can see elsewhere in the Southern Conference today, Furman looking to remain unbeaten in conference play, leading Chattanooga. The other scores there as Georgia Southern starts now from the 25-yard line and has to score a touchdown. A little end around to Jason Foster. The Appalachian defense gives him absolutely nothing there. Jerome Touchstone forces Foster out of bounds for little or no gain. It'll be second down. Yeah, they want to get the football into a big play guy's hand. That's Jason Foster. They tried that play a couple times tonight as he's very elusive in that open field with good moves and excellent speed and athleticism. Just nothing doing there because the Mountaineers are playing good disciplined defense. Call it a gain of one on the play. Travis Clark, little play action, throwing toward the end zone. And McCutcheon had turned one way, Clark through the other. Reggie McCutcheon was open, but the football was not there. No, it wasn't. And I don't know who messed up, but those are the things that Georgia Southern's got to get better at. They're working on this new offense. Inconsistent, inconsistent, inconsistent. He is wide open. Someone made a mistake there. Clark thought he'd turn outside. McCutcheon turned inside, and this was an opportunity missed. Absolutely. So now it's third and nine from the 24-yard line. Georgia Southern must get a touchdown, but needs a first down as well. Pass overthrown and incomplete. So now the Eagles will face a fourth and nine. To keep the game alive, they'll need to at least get a first down. And to continue, ultimately, they've got to get to the end zone. But to get another play, they've got to get inside the 15. Here you take a look at the replay, and I tell you, McCutcheon was very well covered and really couldn't get out of his break. Look at number four, Jason Foster, open in the middle of the field. Had inside Travis position. Yeah, and had inside position on Lynch. And now with Georgia Southern facing fourth down, Appalachian waves off a penalty and ready to try to seal the deal right here. So Georgia Southern needs to get inside the 15 to get any more plays. Ultimately, he needs the end zone to extend it to a third overtime. Appalachian trying to win the game with its defense right here. Clark from the pocket throws incomplete. That's the ball game. I tell you what, the Mountaineers stepped up there in this second possession of overtime, but you gotta look at Georgia Southern with a missed opportunity as Clark missed an open receiver a time or two and just not executed. The Georgia Southern Eagles do a great job on homecoming, 
but there are no moral victories. The defense stood the charge. The offense missed some opportunities. And in the end, top-ranked Appalachian gets it done in double overtime. Our final score is Appalachian 27, Georgia Southern 20. Our next Southern Conference game next Saturday when the Furman Paladins travel to Appalachian State to meet these same Mountaineers. Coming up next, Poker Superstars Invitational. For Jamie Newberg and our entire Sports South crew, I'm Paul Crane saying so long from Statesboro, Georgia.